The Just Being Earnest podcast is proudly presented by Goody's Hangover Powder. Goody's understands that you can't afford to let a hangover slow you down. That's why after a night of drinking, I treat my hangovers with the easy-use powder that tastes good and acts fast. Goody's Hangover Powder tempor- God, temporarily always gets me, but not for long, only temporarily. Goody's Hangover Powder temporarily relieves those minor aches and pains due to those stupid hangovers and gets you back on your feet feeling fresh fast. We've all got a lot going on in our everyday lives, and Goodies is here to help. I personally love Goodies Hangover Powder because after a night of fun, it helps restore my mental alertness so I can get back to what I love. Writing songs, playing shows, recording podcasts, hanging with friends, and creating hangovers. Goodies is great tasting and fast acting. So don't let hangovers slow you down. Try Goodies Hangover Powder today. Head over to Amazon and use my code one Earnest for a discount on six packages. The number one E-R-N-E-S-T. Just being earnest. Just being earnest. Just being earnest. There, that's your Jesus. Oh, what? Just a shot. Fuck you. (laughs) Just a shot. Golly. One shot. I hope y'all are rolling, man. Fuck this guy. Did you just see him pour the whole bottle of tequila in there? We are rolling. Look, this is a perfect way to start because I poured. What Jelly Roll in any other setting would consider a shot, <laughs> but when I'm pouring him a drink, well, it just it's, the, I, I would have took it if it felt equal. You know what I'm saying? Is that I you would, were like, "Here's my shot, and here's your shot." So, so what you're saying is, I made sure that you had more than me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in well, hindsight, you're, you're, that you're, seems pretty petty. Hospitality. <laughs> <term>. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I love that this one started with you pouring shit, and the last one started with me pouring shit. Bro. You were way more effective so than I watching, was. if you're watching this episode, and you saw the Bustin' with the Boys episode come out last week. Yes. You know that this is not our first podcast we've done today. <laughs> In fact, we only took a break to drink more. That was <laughs> it. That was it. So... Uh, and get food. A little recap God. of the last 24 hours for people if they're just tuning in. We've been drinking together for 24 hours. We've been hours, drinking. So I had a 4th of July party. I don't throw parties. Never really thrown a party. Threw a 4th of July party and uh, had the Tap Truck Nashville pull up and I had four cocktails on tap and a beer. I don't know if the beer got touched, but the cocktails got drank a lot. Rafe, oh te- Rafe texted me on the way here. He goes, I'll read verbatim. Yeah, because please, me and Jelly have been talking about what happened like we, everybody got too drunk at my house last night, which oh, is what I planned Jesus. on. Oh, right, you're gonna appreciate this. I got a new text <laughs> from Rafe. So Rafe, Rafe texts me. He goes, uh, "I had like ten of those blueberry drinks. D R A N K S. I had like two of them, ten of them blueberry drinks." I said, "Dude, I literally drank maybe twenty drinks total last night, not including the shots we had with Jelly Roll, which we both showed up to do busting with the boys podcast. So hungover, he had to leave the bus to take a shit ten minutes in." Rafe said, "Ha ha ha! I've been shitting all day." <laughs> yes, you are not alone. You're not alone. I am here. With you, how can I pee when I can't even poop? I was pissing out of my butthole, he man. Worried, and then dude. I just yeah. went to losers and we grabbed lunch, and I was just man about halfway through the first. I took one bite of food and was like, man, there's no room for hey, anything else dude, in my stomach until something else goes. I'm I'm a wise man because I trust myself ordering whatever it is you had just ordered yeah. because I'd already had, I was like, Oh, that country fried steak and the special looks good. You said, I'll do the Buffalo chicken wrap, uh, chips and queso. <laughs> and, uh, hope looks over. I said, I'll do exactly. I'll do that because queso is what sold me. Not for the chips. Yeah. I'm dipping the wrap in the queso. That's what I did too. That's some real fat boys. Fat shit, boys right? are us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's us. I yeah. was like, fuck yeah, man. I feel great, man. Are you? A f- do you consider yourself a foodie or do you just like just to fat? Eat? Yeah, just okay. fat. Okay, yeah, dude, because it's all the same to but me. But when man. you're on tour, do you not like trying the new? Oh yeah, no, I love it. That's I love when you go to towns and you're like, what y'all shit? And it's like Especially when people come here, like when oh, you're downtown dude. and your your bus is parked. Within right walking there. distance, and you're everything. like, dude, put me where. Like when I was joking with that dude from Pittsburgh about making me a permani sandwich. Yeah, that was like that's a thing in Pittsburgh. And you know what I what love is about a permani sandwich? What are so you listen, is that pastrami? Well, you pulled it up and make sure I get it right. But it's like, uh, the biggest thing I remember about the sandwich, I've only ate it drunk, but they put French fries on the sandwich, 
and you're not allowed to modify whatever the sandwich is. That's how I feel about my ex. Right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> only ate it drunk. Yeah, only ate it drunk. <laughs> I could tolerate the whiff, but it's like fucking... <laughs> my, my <laughs> Dude, my wife told me on TikTok the other day, she decided to give me this fact on TikTok. I love when, commu- women, 2021, you communicate via TikTok right. with your wife. She was wife. like, watch this. No, this is a thing I want to do right quick. She's like, just listen, it's serious. And it was talking about how women fart and the fart rolls frontwards. And I didn't think about it because some of my farts roll frontwards yeah, too. The every frontward now rolling farts is right. But they stop electric. at our balls. You know what I'm saying? Like for them, think about where it goes. Does it go up their pussy or does it come out the front of the I'm shorts? wondering, like, does you know, where does it actually end at? <laughs> but when she said that she did that, I was like, that is fucking atrocious. Yeah. Is what that is. Yeah. Fucking what I was do- telling a what serious we're doing here story. is wondering a disaster. A disaster. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Permanity Brothers I hate you. We gotta talk <laughs> about dirty go pussy. <laughs> we were talking about butt farts on a female going up the front. <laughs> oh no, back to the fucking Permanity sandwich. Well, that's you took me there. I was talking about this fucking incredible sandwich. What's on the sandwich, Legos? Right here, right Yeah, no, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Right, so it's just like sure. Well, because from, right, this, so okay, saying, so this is where it's gotten big. Is it sour cream? Like the first time I went there, it wasn't like a uh yeah, it's like coleslaw. Does it show? It's funny how I probably don't What kind show. of meat is on it? Yeah, I, don't, I, I can't don't remember. Tell. It's like a salami. It's like listen, yeah, what okay. I know about it the most is whatever's on that some bitch, you can't change. Yeah, okay, it's not right. a you don't customize it, motherfucker. You eat right, what you the fuck we got we sell one goddamn sandwich and this is it. I love and that. Because I went the first time and I was like, yeah, man, I think I'll take it without the coleslaw or whatever it was. No, it was like, won't. no, that's not how this works. You're going to eat exactly the sandwich as it is. All right, talk to us. Slaw, tomato slices, and French fries between two thick Oh, that's what those are, French fries. Yeah, that's it. And that they, sounds really good. Oh, dude, it was fucking fire. There was a line wrapped around the building. Of fucking aggressive Pittsburgh people when I went there mm. at four o'clock in the morning one time. This was the one downtown. It was like a Waffle House setup. And you went in there, dude, and you stood in line, and five fights broke out in that line. It was the most Pittsburgh shit I could have Damn. ever dreamed. It was fucking freezing cold. That's some Philly shit, too, though, because oh, you know sure. uh, the old joint that's open 24 7 yep. uh, slinging the, the Philly cheesesteaks. I remember one night we got done playing at the, what is it, the the, the, the Rock Theater or whatever it is. Anyways, we get done. There's a Philly cheesesteak spot right across the street that closed like three minutes before we got there. Oh. So we're asking, like, where's the other place? Like, well, the best legit place. And please, followers, let me know what I'm talking about. But it was like a five-minute drive away. And at this point, it's midnight. We're partying. Cheesesteak sounds great. So we pull up. And it's a line. It's like 1230 in the morning by the time we get there. And line up at every window. There's a window on every side. Oh, yeah. I called Delaney and she's like, you're still awake? I'm like, yeah, I'm waiting on a Philly cheesesteak right now. She's like, unbelievable. I hope it's worth it. Guess what? It was worth fucking it. Fucking worth dude, it. Dude, cheese whiz. It's not anything oh, yeah. special. It's no. fucking spray can cheese. No, for sure. But it's fucking I used to genius. huff that in middle school. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still fat enough that I just shoot it straight when I go to the kitchen at midnight <laughs> drunk. Just fucking, just straight yeah. to the tongue, as much as I can put on there. Use it like small. a nasal spray? Oh, yeah, for sure. Just fucking see how it works. I might catch an old drain from this one. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm over here getting cheddared right now, dog. I'm getting cheddared. Um, thanks for doing this podcast. Like, it was originally going to be Chris Lane, and he had to spend... We were going to talk about dad shit, and but he had to spend the night in the hospital with his baby because uh, he it has an ear infection. I'm Which two is, for two on being substitutes today. Fucking me like too. Sub. I'm yeah. substituting my own podcast right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he had an ear infection. Which my little brother had ear infections, with Chris, and we're seven years apart. So I remember that's miserable. You it's can't miserable. do anything. All they can do is cry. It's super oh. painful, and there's eardrops. So I hate they're going through that. But anyways, I was gonna do a solo. And then we just decided to drink, and you're like, if you need somebody, I got you. I was and like, I'm here. <laughs> <does. Why laughs> we were literally, you could, <laughs> from here, drinking. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, I'm not inviting myself, but I'm inviting myself. If you well, fucking I need I, somebody. I not know how I felt about inviting you, because you'd just done a favor, and we're hungover. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Fucking dude, I'm in. I feel better now that we got some shots in us, and that chicken wrap was kind of fire. I tell people all the time, and people that listen to this podcast now know, like, I, I ran into a dude... At the Denver airport, I'm, I sit down at my gate after the long bullshit flight 
everything I was just talking about. Terrible day. And I sit down and this dude across me goes, you earnest? I go, yeah. <laughs> are, are you the cops? <laughs> but he goes, he goes, he goes, you, you earnest? I go, yeah. He goes, dude, huge fan. Like, I listen to your podcast. Oh, da, da, da. It's like me and my girl are going to Nashville for the first time. Da, da, da. See it, losers. And yeah. like, they know I talk about losers so much. On yeah. here. But bro, I could, if I got sober, won't, but yeah, if, for I, sure. but if yes. I did, I would still go to losers for lunch because yeah. the food is fucking good. Oh, dude, listen, man. I, I, I didn't know they had food. How about that? That's the best part. How about That's that? And I stumbled in there today that. and I was like, I seen Chris and he's like, what's up? And I was like, I don't know, man. I feel like Ernest is tricking me. And I was like, he said we were going to grab lunch and I knew we were going to end up get drinking because it's fucking us. But I thought we'd at least really grab lunch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was like, no, they got food here. I was like, really? Yes. Because I was going to go next door to the uh, slider spot or something. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. Winners shares a kitchen with losers. Yep. Shares a menu. And then they have their. Oh, lunch. it's winners. Because I was explaining to my wife. She's like, they got food. I was like, yeah, I guess the bar next door, they brokered a deal. I didn't realize winners had food. Yeah. <laughs> I just was like, <laughs> I just thought these people were like walking next to the place, yeah. the dogwood or something. Yeah. Just no, coming back no. With fucking Winter, trays. Winners, winners serves food and then losers serve food out of winner's kitchen through the back door really yeah that's fucking dope and so that's why i love i love losers because people go in there and just oh, i'm gonna drink 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 and i'm like i go in there i'll get green tea shot coors light and a lunch menu please Thank yeah you. not lunch menu is clutch what is a green tea shot can we don't ask me i just drink them i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i know that i, I normally, turned you on to no, these the then. That, well uh <laughs> I think I think Charlie Handsome. There was like a day where everybody was ordering green tea shots, and I was like, ah, because I'm not a huge green tea fan. Yeah. But I tried a green tea shot, and I was like, this is refreshing. Because I always get a Vegas bomb. That's that my normal when I walk into Losers. They know Vegas bomb, Coors Light, out of the cooler over here because it's colder than the one in the ice. Right. Then I started switching up to green tea, and I walked in today, and Hope said, "Green tea." Said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> That's me, actually. I'm the green <laughs> tea <me>. shot guy. <laughs> so what goes in a green tea shot? Whiskey, peach schnapps, lemon or lime soda. All right. Why is it called a green tea shot? Maybe. Does it look like green tea? Maybe. I've never had one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it does. I was wondering, was there green tea in that? But no, there's That's not. That's why I was worried. So what I goes in a Vegas green tea bomb? Guy. I want to say a similar, but Red Bull and like Red Bull and there's like a... It's a... It's Crown, Crown, Peach Schnapps, and Malibu Rum plus Red Bull. Ooh, see that that was I almost burnt myself out on that because I did that for like all of 2020. That'll get you Vegas going. Bomb was yeah. the drink. I've never had a Vegas Bomb in Vegas. Really? Probably should. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the Vegas bombs in Vegas were nose bombs. <laughs> Vegas bombs in Vegas go up. Yeah, I was going to say, I've always done Vegas bombs in Vegas. I lived there. We bombed a lot. We bombed a lot. <laughs> Fucking, I, I did. A I Vegas lived, bomb addiction. In I Vegas. lived in Vegas for a year, and it was it was it was a unique experience. Yeah, let's talk about that because living in Vegas versus the <laughs> you and my wife's conversation about Vegas last night was the goat. You were like so. Do you drink? She was like, no. It's like always drank or always didn't drink. She was like, no, I'm just kind of, you know, I want to get back to it, but I just, I'm not drinking right now. You yeah. Know? She's like, I'm from, you know, and you said from Vegas. She was like, oh, so did you do other drugs? She was like, I'm from Vegas. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. I did cocaine. Yeah, she, yeah, She's we, like, she, yeah. we did tons of blow in Vegas. Yeah. But, and I'm like, <laughs> like, yeah, she goes, but I'm trying to get on a little getaway and maybe try to get back into drinking. I was like, yeah, I'm praying for you. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> Whatever you need, I love her either way. But she's she's a she's a fun she's fun. So was that Toby Key song? You ain't no fun, fun since, since I quit, quit drinking. drinking. <laughs> no, no, she's super cool, sober too. She just I think it's like more of her outgoing personality. She probably wants to get a drink in her again. But yeah, I never stopped. So I mean, you know, my thing has always been very consistent. Consistency is key. Yeah, my <laughs> wife's also way better at like growing than me. You know what I mean? Like, she's the person who's, like... Like, spiritually growing? Every kind yeah. of growing. Yeah. Like, from fucking holistic vitamins to, like, yo, you should read this. Gotcha. You should look into this. You should do this. And I'm just like, I think I'm just going to fucking pound Are tequila and write songs. Are you younger than you? You know what I'm saying? Are you all the same age? I'm a little younger than her. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little younger than her. Nobody... Fucking, I get shit for that, by the way. 
Because people were like, no fucking way, son. You got to be. You just said it kind of. He was like, she's younger than you. I was like, Jesus Christ. Is that not the polite I'm like way the to go dude. about it? Yeah, no, with her. But God, it makes me feel like an old war whore. It's like fucking. You're 29, I'm, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> fucking the same right. Age. Fuck yeah. yeah okay. And I'm <laughs> looking at fucking. And like, people are always like, so how much younger than you is your wife? I'm like, she's five years older than me. <laughs> they were like, whew. Sure don't look it. I'm like, God, man. <laughs> is it because I'm fat or do I look like I've done that many all, drugs in my first life? First of all, either a huge compliment to her <laughs> yeah, yeah. or huge insult to you. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. feel like it's landing yeah, somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I feel like it's always an insult to me because <laughs> yeah. I'm the naive guy that's like, I think I look young. And they're like, no, nah, man, you look like you've been rode hard and put away wet. Yeah. I'm like, fucking yeah. shit. Oh. God. A lot fucking. of people would pay to be rode hard and put away wet. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or road oh. wet and put away hard. What? It's, it's second time in my life I snorted tequila, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I've only done first it twice. Was the last time we did the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right after we got off here. Dude, the first time we did the podcast so funny because it was a two-part that we released Ooh. separately. And I remember after the first episode we dropped, it was only an hour long. Some dude commented on my Instagram. He goes, uh, Yo, you should be dropping way longer episodes. Like, like <laughs> what are you running out of shit to talk about? And like, you know, you can't be mad at things people don't know. Yeah. But I wanted to just be like, hey, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> okay. And here's why. A, A, I could talk for 15 hours and you don't want to hear it. Sure. Second of all, recorded a two hour podcast, dropping yeah. the other fucking half next yeah. week. So Shut up. Fucking suck it soft, bitch. So, but instead, I think I liked it and said LOL or some shit. Thumbs up. What about this thing last night, the flag thing? Oh, yeah. The the dude that's saying I was... He said you were I, just, I told Delaney... Here's why I knew that I wasn't uh, breaking flag mm-hmm. code. Because when we played at that Folds of Honor deal last week, I was wearing that. And I said... I asked one of the veterans if I was breaking... I was like, is this okay to be wearing right now? He goes, yeah. He was like, you're wearing clothes that have an American flag on them. You're not dressing yourself in the American flag. He was like, you're just being patriotic. I was like, okay, that was my intention. So when the dude commented that last night, that's why I tagged you to eventually get to you to ask your opinion. Like, is that, I feel like every flag we had was off the ground. I put flags in sticks in the ground. There's, I mean, I went and read the flag code though. And it there's some stuff in there. Like, no, I know flag code stuff. But to your point, yeah, this is not repurposing the flag. This is just I wasn't, a print that looks yeah, like the flag. I, I hope I wasn't. Obviously, what we like to call a vet flag. What? A vet flag. Oh, the like the guy that commented that is a vet flag. Yeah. Well, the two dudes serving the drinks last night are active military. <laughs> then I think and, and right. check, dude, how, check. Are we, how are we overlooking my Forrest Gump wave though dude, okay, I feel right, like no. that was a listen hey, wait, wait for it wait for it I feel like this it. encompasses me and Ernest's whole relationship is, right here this is watch and both times this is us this is me hey Forrest Gump <laughs> wave right said, and then this is Ernest realizing I bombed it and high-fiving me. And I'm happy to get the high-five that was a genuine snicker yeah. I was like yay I fucking made it on dude, this the uh the two the two dudes serving drinks last night were awesome and they were so gonna have good. them back but we were figuring out I was going back and forth to my car blue or playing music out of my car speakers and then my boy Mike G had a speaker and it was just kind of confusing at some point so as it got dark and we're drinking and we're getting ready to shoot in fireworks I was like yo play Ray Charles America the Beautiful and nobody could get going and so dude behind the bar grabbed his Bluetooth speaker first of all. Could have br- could have brought that out <laughs> yeah. when you got here. <laughs> second of all, <laughs> second of all, so he starts playing that, and it's coming to an end. We'd fired off a couple of fireworks, and I come around. I was like, "Yo, can I pick a song?" And I come around to pick the Toby Keith song. Uh, put a boot in your ass. And if that wasn't the next song on the playlist before I could choose it, <laughs> it had already changed and started playing. I set the phone out. I said, "This is meant to be." I'm like, walk off, fucking crushed a beer. Speaking of fireworks, let me see how drunk Ern was early in the night. There was fireworks happening, right? And finally, I walk over to Ern and go, who's shooting those fireworks? And Ern looks back genuinely surprised when he I realized. I don't remember this. This is a true story. He said, oh, shit. 
that's our fireworks somebody shooting. He was like, <laughs> I thought that was the neighbor. Oh, yeah, they had yeah, been yeah, back right. there shooting Ernest's fireworks right. off for like 20 minutes. Yeah. And he was just compl- oblivious. Yeah, I, he was just fucking out of it. I didn't know we were shooting yeah. fireworks yet. He was like, I, oh, okay. I had a whole plan in my head about I'm going to finish this drink. I'm going to go to <laughs> My nephew is uh, is obsessed with fireworks at this point in his life, which I get it. But like, whenever he's obsessed about something, he's way obsessed about it. And so like, he was sending, he, has, he showed me this app, TNT app. Where you can like take a picture of your yard and place the firework you want to buy, like, and it'll show you what it does on some like CGI shit. Shit. And so he was sending me all the fireworks he wanted, sent me all the fireworks he got, and then he got to my house and I was like, yo, Buster. And I showed him my firework collection sitting on the table. And I don't know, I guess he just wasn't paying all the way attention because he only saw like the bottle rockets that were laid out and didn't register that all the mortars behind it right. were fireworks because he comes over to me kind of bummed. He was like, why don't you get more fireworks? I was like, <laughs> I said, what did you look at? And we walked over to the table and he showed me, he was like, you just got bottle rockets and some sparklers. I was like, I got mortar, 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 mortar. 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 He goes, oh, these are fireworks? I go, yeah, these are big fireworks. <laughs> you light them, drop them in the can and run and yeah. pray the can doesn't turn over because it's going to be a bad day. If the can turns over. I had Nolan drunk enough and convinced that we should do a bottle rocket war. And that was my favorite part of last night too because he's like, Nolan's that's down. how I knew how all of us grew up yeah, alike. Yeah, yeah. I was like, we should have an old school bottle rocket war. And Nolan was like, fuck yeah, it's been 20 years. Let's fucking do one. I was Bro. like, that's how I feel too. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was a kid, we for sure had bottle rocket yeah, wars. Yeah, yeah. Roman candle wars. Yeah. Roman and when the wars. Roman candle war was done, you did the bottle rocket war because you could put them in the Roman, the yeah, empty Roman the, candle thing. That's the, yeah. You know? Did you get hit with Roman candles ever? Fuck yeah. Every time we had a war, I was fat and slow. I don't know why I like doing them so much. I was the perfect <laughs> target. I was. I took one for everybody on our team. Every funny. time we had a Roman candle war, the other team was like, just aim for the big fella, you y'all. Were, we're going to light them up. the place for the rest yeah, of the Yeah, so they <laughs> hid behind no, me. Don't worry about it. Yeah, they either hid behind me or went the other way because <laughs> they happen. knew I was an easy target. <laughs> so it'd be like, we're shooting, and I'm like running to shoot, just getting popped, dude. <laughs> you turn around and <laughs> start shooting yourself. Even my mother, God rest her soul. I mean, my father god rest his soul would say sir young man you should maybe you know sit in a corner or something when they do that you're just that's not your sport and i was like what he was saying was you are not fucking physically fit yeah, to be running around and not getting hit with something yeah, for right. sure you yeah. Know what I'm yeah, yeah, like, yeah 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 the old fashioned thing if you run from a bear you don't have to be the fastest person there you just have to be faster than the slowest person yes yeah i'm the guy you have to be faster than yeah yeah, you know what I'm yeah. For yeah. Sure. like dodgeball safe space yeah, roman candle war like you can get hit with a dodgeball yeah, 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 forget sure. about it. roman I'll, candles yeah, blind yeah, you yeah 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 you should maybe just like sit that one out have you had close calls of getting hit in the face with Roman candles yeah, or, just or bottle general? rockets? Okay, I've been hitting the face. We're gonna a lot. we're gonna move on to okay. that. Okay, right now say, we're talking dude, about. I have been punched in the face an ungodly amount of times. Yeah, no, I got hit. I got hit one time with a bottle rocket in the side of my head. What's that like? Does Boom. it explode on the side of your head or did no? It hit well, lucky it, it hit me and went up and exploded right above my head. Oh. So yeah, you would have. But it scared me, and I was young enough that I thought I was hit. So I was like, ah, I'm fucking, ah, I'm hit, I'm hit, I'm running in the house, and my mom's like, nothing's wrong. Nothing. I was like, nothing. I was like, you don't see it? She was like, I don't see anything. Because it just like went poof, poof, pop. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't bad. Poof, poof, pop. Yeah, was, sample that. Yeah, for sure. Poof, 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 pop. <laughs> yeah, no, it'd be great. Listen, yeah. yeah. You've ever got hit with one? No. Ever. Mm-mm. Fuck me. Have you ever had a firework go bad on you? Not as bad as Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Three July 4th hey, in a row. It's been my favorite it's post. It's the best video ever. <laughs> Back up, Terry! <laughs> Terry! The Put best part was the Terry. guy lifting his foot up like he was going to like wave it away or something. <laughs> yeah. Like You yeah. couldn't tell if he was going to kick it or what. I don't Bro, know what the fuck he was thinking. Terry had no say in what was happening at that point. <laughs> hey, that's was, that's Terry what I was took it like a champ, though. What else is he going to take it like? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Dude, um, <laughs> and and speaking of speaking of the wheelchair situation, because God bless him, there's just when we played the Folds of Honor thing, yep. wounded vets and all and and all the all this great event, whatever. We there's a tent and there's vets under there and we're all shaking hands. It's like paying for the long drive or shoot out of a cannon, one of the two. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going around shaking hands. And there's a guy sitting in a wheelchair, yeah. clearly a vet, and I had him pinned as a waist down guy. 
Never assume a guy isn't just all the way fucking paralyzed because I went, to sh- <laughs> I went, I, I went, I shook everybody's hand in the tent, went to shake his, shake his hand, and he just looked. He had a, he had a great, great sense of humor about it. But he just looked at me, and goes, <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he just looked at me, like, and I kind of quickly took the hint and tapped the side of his arm. I was like, Hell yeah. Thanks for your service. Went, kept going around. I, I turned around, like obviously, like the other guys were behind me. I was the fucking Trojan horse of handshakes for the whole tent. I've got my three, my foursome behind me, who's not going to make that mistake now. Right. I had to make that mistake, so I had to walk out of the tent with my tail tucked, looking at these guys like, well, don't like don't shake his. Everybody hand. else was like, "Thank you, Earn. Thank yeah. you, Earn." But what's all right? But what? I'm, what am I, I didn't I, mean to laugh. <laughs> that's just not where I thought that no, story was going. Trust me. He's like, that's I not where I thought that story down. was going either. I, I thought it was going to be a, a, yeah, a nice sure. little yeah. deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, At least you caught on and wasn't being like, well, thank you again. The guy was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. <laughs> what, are you just going to sit there and not shake my hand? <laughs> no, it wasn't that. God, I felt so bad, but I think he understood my intentions were good. I was uh, All I meant was respect. And oh, then, I just, then I gave him a link to American Rust. That's dope. <laughs> Yeah. Free plug. <laughs> Free plug. <laughs> By the way, you should have somebody pull this song. Up I love that you. song, man. Yeah, I Listen. love that song too. It's it's um. Everybody at the label says it's gotten the best. I mean, I can tell, but that is the best one I've put out yet so yeah. far. As far as like whatever numbers they look at on the back end of things, yeah. it's going well. And thank all of y'all for listening and sharing. Um, Dog, I text you that day, but like, I still listen to things like a rapper. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm looking for the line that makes me go, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I hate you for writing that line. And there was a few in there, but I think the one that really made me say fuck you first was, I think I text you, that shell's been on the corner mm-hmm. since Coke was glass and gas, gas was, was a quarter. quarter. And that, that water, water tower seen, seen a thousand, thousand times. I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> you, I fucking hate you. Hey, I'm telling you, bro, um, writing country music coming from the rap background, which is like, I've been... It's it's such a and you you get this because you know but I'm just talking to people that are listening on the podcast like coming from a rap background and writing country music it's almost like a weird thing to the further I am removed from when I was just rapping rapping to now when I'm trying to explain to someone oh what kind of music do you make it used to be I rap and do country music and make rap beats too and like now I've just learned to narrow that answer down I make country music right then if we if the conversation continues. Then I'll be like, but I come from a rap background. And when a white dude says that, especially after he's led with country music, <laughs> there's just a stigma. It's like, oh, you do country rap. Yeah. It's like, no, no, no. Like I've, if, if I'm rapping, I'm talking about that part of my life. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about, about wagon wheels. Yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so going in to country rights now, especially like the first couple of years of when I was really writing country and had the reputation of the rap stuff, what people expected of me in a room was different than what I expected of myself. As we get in there, they want me to rap, and I wanted to write a country song. Right. And that's a that's a fierce little dynamic to try to maneuver right. when you think they want you for one thing, but you're trying to do another. Yeah, I'm going through it now. Yeah, I know. When people are like, you could rap right there, and I'm like, I don't want to rap right yeah, there. Yeah, right. No, you know what, what I'm saying? Like, I could, and I might not have ever came here. Yes. You know what I'm saying? People, you know? people, people still would be like, dude, you should just do, do your snow thing in the bridge. I'm like, yeah, yeah but... I would rather just like write a really good bridge and sing it. Yeah, for you sure. Know? Yeah. But approaching approaching verses with a rap background means something other than cool flow or whatever. To me now, it's like you can still in country music have a setup and a punchline. I love it. The setup, the punchline, the compound syllable rhyme. Yes, it's stuff that I Party's hear like that, that too. Yeah, that, for in, sure. that inner I rhyming. That was cool. That yeah, that 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 multiple syllable stuff. Whenever I'm just like. To me, that's like the magic of yeah. like what is like Scholes when he heard the shit I'm working on now was like the first thing Andrew Scholes said was like, yo, your rap background is showing because I'm like listening to you sing bars. Yes. You know what I'm saying? He's like, and that's dope. Yes. You know what I mean? He was like, that's going to do you so well in this well, game. One thing I wanted. It's like the record we did at Papa Bill and Smoke and Maybe Dang. Down to God and tell him what I think. Yes. That's rap. But it's presented. It's how you rap it. Yeah, for sure. W R A P. Right. 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 You're getting the sure. same. You're getting the same deal. Exactly. It's just different it's rapping. Depending on how you rap it. Um, I meant to say this. I just. I'm glad we are going here because the last time we did a podcast, I meant to give a huge shout out and a thank you to Petty, right? Uh, Nashville rapper who I've I've had early on in my podcast. Four wheels all video, but 
me and Patty were on his porch one day, uh, three years ago, and we're chilling, smoking. He's playing a bunch of records. I'm playing records, and at this time, I was still like, I look up, to, I I look up to Petty right. as as a writer, artist, and just a guy. For the record, I think Petty is the most slept on underground artist in the state of Tennessee. Not just Nashville. Thank I you. mean, like the state of Tennessee. And that and and that's coming from a fucking respected OG. Yeah, I could say it, but listen. Yeah. No, I Pet- think I think he's I think he's for real. Like you know, I think he's I think he knows his only problem is that he just he gets so over it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like well, you could Jay- feel it in Jay- him. Like did because because yeah. a guy a guy like Petty, I I try to explain Petty to people, and it's like, look, I'm a I'm a connoisseur of bars and oh, flow man. and wordplay, and Petty is maybe one of the best to do it. Like I put him on a level. With Cole and him. Oh, dude, for and, sure. He's like that. And, I believe that. And, and I'm not, and you know, as a rapper, that's, and as a white rapper, that's like so white to say. But, right. but, Petty, real. but Petty is it's real, though. Petty dude. Is that like, dude Andre, is he's, 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 and I add Andre into that mix. No, for sure. Good news segment presented by Goodies. Something good in my life that's going on right now because of Goodies. I was able to get back on the horse today. I'll tell you right now because yesterday, me and Jelly Roll took a knot and tied it on. Yes. We drank, we drank, Very true. we, we drank, <laughs> yes. Jelly and I drank like we had something to prove to one another that neither of us had to prove to each other. <laughs> <laughs> we had already got to that stage we, of our friendship. We're so far, <laughs> we know, but we did it anyway. We were proving it to everybody else there yeah, that night. Sure. And, uh, and Goody's Hangover Powder, it was the most legal way to get back on my feet. Yes. And, and I think that anybody having a rough morning or a rough night, I, I asked a bartender the other day, I said, how are you doing? He goes, I'm hungover for the second time today. <laughs> I relate to that. That actually. guy needs goodies. He needs goodies. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he needs so goodies. goodies hangover powder is going to help you at 99% of the time. The other 0.9% take a second pack. Listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> if there was ever an episode that was literally brought to you by goodies hangover powder, it was today, my friend. It wasn't brought to you by me. I, I, sure. I was just two and a half hours ago. You were eating the seizure rabbit losers looking at me taking a goodies powder talking about I am hungover. Yeah. Raising Cane's does one thing, and they do that one thing exceptionally well. Quality chicken finger meals. At Cane's, you get high-quality products served quickly and conveniently. The specialized systems developed by Raising Cane's allows them to maintain a level of quality. <laughs> Don't ask me to say quality. Allows them to maintain a level, a level, don't ask me to say level of quality. <laughs> Allows them to maintain, don't ask me to say maintain a level of quality. <laughs> Allows them to maintain a level of quality unmatched in the industry. Canes don't compromise on equality. On, 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 on equality? <laughs> All chickens are welcome at Canes. They don't you can, either. You can hey, literally. Canes don't compromise on quality. Cut corners or clutter their menu with new products so you can get the same great high-quality chicken finger meals every time. Visit your neighborhood Canes today, and don't forget to use their mobile app to skip the line. So anyways, me and Petty are on his porch, and at this time, I was still had I still had rap demos because I would play for him and get his word on, and then I was also showing him my country stuff, and the way he responded to my country stuff was always better than the rap stuff, which I get now. At the time, I felt a type of way. I was like, but, but. But, but it's like, look, yeah, I can rap, but he was like, you can rap. But he was like, you showing up here in a wife beater, camo pants and Air Force Ones and you're playing songs like Locals Only and da, da, da. like I played him Locals Only long before it came out. And he was like, Betty told me on his porch one day, I'll never forget it. He goes, you could not change anything about yourself. Just commit to being a country artist and you could be the biggest country artist ever. And he goes, and if anything, he goes, and if anything happens, like it always happens. I'm going to tell you that, and it's going to happen, and I'll still be here. Yeah. And my goal in life is for Petty to not still be there because he's not hes not the only person that had told me to stick to country. Right. But I might respect that dude's opinion so much to where I really – I didn't quit rapping that day, but I started believing in myself as a country artist. And, like, his mama, Miss Pat, would come out, like, when we'd be playing – his speaker blew out, so I gave him one of my PA speakers, and that was what we listened to on the porch. We'd plug in and just play songs for hours. Miss Pat would come out when she heard a country song. She'd be like, who's this? Be, it's yeah. me. Like, it's me. Yeah. And, oh, so and, awesome. and I tell Petty now, too. I mean, it's just like, I'm not, it's not that I wouldn't be doing this without you, but I might not be doing it yet. Yeah. 
you know, I might have chased the other thing for yeah. a little longer until you actually was like, Yo. yeah. And now, now it's like, I'm not the biggest thing in country, but everything he predicted is tr- like people do know, people do know that I'm a guy to get in contact with for some songs. It's right, like right. if that's just if that's my reputation right now, that was not my reputation when Petty said that for sure. Right. And so, yeah, I didn't get to give him that shout out on the last time we did a podcast, but no, dope. It remi- how it happened with me was the transition was yeah. it started with Lido. So Lido had called me and he had heard some of the like, I started singing my own hooks yeah. a few years back. And Lido had called me and was like, yo, man, I was living in Vegas. And Lido was like, yo, I'm in Vegas. You still here? Because he's out there with Landlord. I'm like, yeah, I'm still here. He's like, man, swing by the studio, man. I want one of those like gravelly hook things you do where you sing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. For me, I was getting invited on a fucking Star Lido record. Like, this is insane. Right. Like, Nashville no way. Shit. Yeah, Nashville rap yeah. shit. I'm like, there's if it ain't no Bunker way. Lito, who is it? Yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm like, this is crazy. Lito's yeah. asked me to get on his album. So I'm telling my wife, and she's like, she's such a sweetheart. She knows nothing about Nashville or rap or anything. She's like, yeah, whatever. Sounds cool. You're excited. Go. I was like, all right, be back. You know what I'm saying? And of course, Lito being Lito, it was like, he called me at like one o'clock in the morning. Right. You know what I'm saying? Vegas time. Oh, sure. Just true Lito fashion. So I show up to the studio at like 2.30. Mm-hmm. And I do that. Mama called me up and said, the chain's on me. But God only knows I put that thing on me. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like I just went and did like a quick hook form. And uh, <clears throat> that record was so well received in the community. People were like, yo. like, yep. And the call that really was my tipping point, and I've never told this, that I, I can honestly say Save Me exists. Because it is. Because I was doing a couple singing songs on every album, but I wasn't fully committed to the singing shit. Tech Nine calls me, right? Tech Nine calls me in 2019. He shows love. Tech Nine is not a hater. Not a hater at all. Yeah. He is the OG of he all OGs. Love. It's the reason he's fucking is, at the age he's at. Token now, too. Everybody, yeah. dog. Anybody who's coming up. Tech, let me tell you something, dude. If there is a ma- mouse pissing on cotton in the corner, Tech Nine hears it and knows about it. Mm-hmm. Dead ass. He don't he don't miss a mosquito fart. Mm-hmm. That dude knows everything happening in an underground world. Mm-hmm. So he calls me and he's like, yo, man, me and Crick, me and Calico have been absolutely banging glitter. The record, the singing mm-hmm. record from Struggle. Me and Struggle's first way than a wheelie. I was like, that's crazy. He was like, yo, and that fall in the fall hook? He's like, that's crazy, G. He was like, I got this record and I want to call it easier for you. Because I want to talk about the other side of suicide, like you being the homie that don't want your homie to kill himself. Like, man, I know that's easier for you, but don't do that to me. Mm. He was like, I just got a blank canvas, though. Can I send it to you? I was like, yeah. I shit you not. I'll never forget where I was at that day. I was sitting in the ICU unit of the med- of the hospital I was at. My father was in there dying. And I was like, I've been in there writing songs anyways, right? I was like, send it to him. I'm write it right now. I wrote that in the hospital. He and sent you a straight. beat with nothing on it? Yeah, just a beat, yeah, just yeah, a track, yeah. right? And you know what it was? I just left the hospital. Me and the wife were grabbing lunch. I was, like, I was like, they told Ritz text me. I was like, yo, I gave Tech Nine your number. He's finna call you right now. I was like, what? My wife was like, I think Tech Nine's finna call me. She was like, what? Sure enough, ring. Yo, 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 what's up, Jelly? You got a second? I was like, for Tech Nine, motherfucker, I got an hour. Hmm. I got three. I'll drive to Kansas City, motherfucker. What's yeah, up? You know what I'm good. saying? Like, goddamn, I'm good. on a flight. And he sent the record. He's like, but listen, though, I want you to do the singing thing. That's it. And I want you to do a verse, too. I was like, cool, but I want you to sing the verse, though, Jelly. And I was like, this is like, to me, like one of the greatest rappers ever. And I was like, I might be on to something with this singing shit. I was like, did, you know what I'm saying? Did you, but, but I'm, I'm going to let you get back. I'm just, I'm going to let you finish. Yeah. But I was, here, seriously, because I was at a point to where if one of my favorite rappers or if, fuck, if Tech asked me to get on a verse, but asked me to sing, I, oh, I'd probably had a pride moment. I was like, but, but I want to rap. Right now, so how did, how did were you? I, felt, I, I, like, I didn't have that because, like, I don't want to rap with Tech Nine. Yeah, right. Well, I'm right, not trying you know to compete I mean? with yeah, Tech right, Nine, but right. I, you know what I'm saying. So I didn't even want, like to me. He saved me because <laughs> I was like, which is where the title right, came from. Yeah, okay. right. I was like, fucking dude, like. I was afraid he'd be like, I want you to rap on there. And it's like, no matter what I do, I'm not going bar to bar with Tech. I'm just not yeah. on the same song. It's yeah. like fucking, you know. It's like. I don't care what nobody says. Jay Z is one of my favorite rappers ever. Right. You feel mm-hmm. me? I love Renegade as a song. He had one of the best verses he's ever had. Yeah. But I don't care what Jay Z said. You just wasn't going to fuck with Eminem in that song. Right. I think that's why when Yellow Wolf did Best Friend, he did it the best way, the smartest way he could have. Conversation. I don't, and Yellow Wolf, I think, is the best rapper ever. 
as far as like in that junk, the new age, like Yella yeah. is a rapping motherfucker. Yella I don't raps, mean like Goat. I yeah. mean like he's a rapping motherfucker. Yeah. But for Yella to be like, you know what I mean? You know, like he came in with that like kind of flow melody stuff. Like, you know, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but I know I wouldn't have wanted to hear Yellow Wolf trying to chop with Eminem. Bro. The you know what I'm saying? Like, it. don't even do that. You don't have a chance. It's like, Jade, I don't care how hard that verse was on Renegade. And I hate, first of all, I am an advocate of don't compare shit. Like, Correct. it bothers me when somebody's like, yeah, I like that new song, but I don't like it as much as I like only. I'm like, motherfucker, you want me to write only 30 more fucking times, right. dog? Like, Jesus Christ, let a motherfucker grow, man. Right. Why do you, or my favorite is when people are like, uh, and you, y'all get this the most in country music. I, th- I, I never seen know, it worse. Yeah. You know what it's finna be, man, you know, I really fuck with such and such, but... Man, you know, such and such doper, though. You know, it's like, dog, they're fucking homies, bro. Just appreciate them. If you like them, leave it there. I really like such and such. And shut the fuck up. They don't have to have a negative comparison behind. Like, just quit. That's half a hater. Yes. Just don't be half a hater. Yeah. Either be a full hater or or just fucking don't hate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't fucking, you know what I mean? Only thing worse than haters are. And I'm falling guilty of that now, right? I'm falling guilty of that now to be like, I think Eminem got him on that verse. I shouldn't have listened to it competitively. But I was listening to two of my favorite rappers yeah. rap together. That ain't even competitive listening. That's just preference listening. Right. And we, I'm just like, I'm listening like, uh, I'm excited. Like, these are two of my favorite rappers from the totally different worlds. And you both cut your teeth right. on, on the one guy that you're both listening to. For sure. So, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, yeah. two of your favorite rappers, one of them cut their teeth on the other one. 100. <laughs> for sure. So, you're just like, let me yeah. let me tune in here. Yeah. It's like, Jay didn't have a chance. So, when Tech, long answer, but when Tech was like, sing, I was like, thank you. Yeah. It was like, because there's nothing I was going to say that yeah. was going to fuck with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was just fucking dope. I love that. See, that. I think a lot of it, and, and rapping without ego is impossible. Mm-hmm. So it's a tough transition because ego doesn't come across well in country. Right. Confidence does, but the fine line between confidence and ego is like a matter of an outfit almost. Right. So it's like where in rap, and I'm not even going to say a white rapper, just rapping in general. Like, there's the Kanye extreme of ego to I am God and right. everything I say is of God, which is a route. Right. And then there's the Cuddy where, or Andre 3000 where it's like genius moments, depressive state, go away. Right. Um, and being somewhere in the middle to where, like, our generation grew up on so much different stuff and rap just happens to be the first thing that like really made me feel something. So I want to do that. It was a real battle with my ego to set that aside because coming up in Nashville specifically, I wanted to be, it was so obvious that the path would be country music. I wanted to do something else. Me too. Because I enjoy rap so much. Like, and especially between 2009 and 2015, That's a rough estimate, but country music isn't what it, or wasn't what it is, and wasn't what it was. Let's talk. Let's talk about that though. Yeah, what do you think's making it what it is? Huh? What do you think's making it what it is? Just y'all, motherfucker. Well, God, (laughs) Jesus, son. Yeah, listen. Be humble. I get it. Go. Don't do the ego thing. I said on this podcast last time. I'll say it again, dog. Y'all are making country music cool again. Yeah. Literally, I'm it's a glad, campaign. I'm just glad it's being received because I don't want to take credit for, for that whole movement. I just want to say that the reason I ever wanted to pursue rap entirely out of Nashville was because, A, I'd made so many friends with guys in the Nashville rap scene that we had talked about already that I felt that I had one foot on the side of things that could shed light onto an unseen side of our city, right. which is fucking within a three mile radius of where we are right now, oh, yeah. but they can't get arrested because it ain't country music and fucking X bar, X bar, X bar down X street won't book them because they're rap, right. but they'll play rap all day. Yeah. So I wanted to be something to shed a light on that and like to prove like, it wasn't like I was just trying to be an angry rapper. I, I, it, I really, It's still real to this day, dog struggle. I'm sure you don't mind me talking about this is his manage his booking agent hit up a venue in town. I won't say the venue, but a nice venue we all know. And struggle sells tickets. Yeah. And was like, "Yo, if we want to do our next show there," and they're like, "How ah, we don't like the genre." Yeah, it's real. Like it was like, "I ah, struggle does that kind of country rap thing. They tear our bar up. It's just a little too. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. just like shit on." And I was like, "Dude, that's fucking like." They put an umbrella over. They assume anything that comes in there that didn't fucking cookie cutter <clears throat> country is. Oh, no, for sure. So. 
that was my intention with with rapping. I was pas- I am passionate about rapping, but like I really wanted to be a beacon of light. So once I laid that pride down, and it wasn't a matter of it's not that I can't rap that I'm not rapping. It's just like I've talked about on this podcast before the ability and necessity of being able to pivot right. in this industry and this town, because I'm, I, I vow to all of you that I still will be a beacon of light to the Nashville hip hop scene because they, the sauce that people talk about, if I got the sauce that you hear on the radio that other people I give some sauce to. I got the sauce from the Nashville hip hop scene, bro, right? Which is you. I love that you don't. I love that you embrace it though. I think that's so gangster. And I feel like you working with guys like me is proof of you putting your hand back to that scene and talking to Petty. We got a record in our inbox with Petty right now. Yeah, we just got to cut. We got to do it. It's gonna get done. Though. Yeah. It's not something that won't happen. Cold town. Yeah, it's like She's for talking sure. about this shit. I know we're talking about right now, <laughs> but it's like it's sitting there. So I mean, yeah. I know it'll get done. Yeah. But you've, I love that you're open about that. Like, yeah. listen, y'all can cut this out if this becomes me crossing the line. Jody Stevens was a hip-hop producer in this town. Yeah. I watched Jody Stevens and cut his teeth in every studio in town, right? I was one of the few people in those studios that was good to Jody Stevens. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard from this dude since he became a country music writer. And he like vehemently denies that he was ever like, like he's embarrassed of like his hip hop roots. And I think that is such a bitch tendency of his. Yeah. And I'll be honest to say it. Like I said, if you want to use this, if he's your homie, I respect that. But I'm just shooting it straight. It's just being earnest. Yeah, it's right. I'm just, I'm just shooting it straight. Like to me, he's like the epitome of that kind of like, like that kind of sucker bitch shit. Yeah. It's like, dog, like you don't have to do nothing for me. I don't care. If we never write or get together, I don't give a fuck. But don't be the guy that acts like that wasn't a part of your history, dog. Right. Like, when you couldn't pay your rent and you was trying to prove to your family you could do it by yourself and wasn't taking daddy's money. Yeah. We were there for you. Yeah. Fucking acknowledge that. Yeah. You don't ever have to work with me. I don't care. I think the shit you write's corny anyways. Yeah. But it's like, you know what I mean? I'm being honest, but it's like... <laughs> no, you're being earnest. I'm, being, I'm just being <laughs> earnest, right? I think a lot of that is like... As the industry grows and as music changes, that's an example, and we could probably name a bunch of other ones with people you guys know, where the industry isn't realizing that there are people like Ernest in the world who put their foot in both camps and say, hi, I like hip hop and hi, I like pop. It's changing now. Yeah, yeah. No, it's changing now. It's changing now. And it's starting with people like, it's like it goes back to the whole crew, the, the culture they've created, right? Like, I love how open heart he is with like, I'm a fucking rock music guy. Yeah. Like heavy music is my fucking yes. shit. When I listen to fucking, I played boots for one of my dudes, right? That is like a rock dude, right? You know, and I play him the record. Yeah. And he's like, hold on. After it's over, he's like, first of all, it's fucking banging. Yeah. He's like, second of all, this is country. Yeah. I was like, yeah. He's like, this is like getting accepted in the country world. Yeah. I was like, like a motherfucker. Like this dude is like selling wazoos of tickets. Yeah. Like he's fucking like everybody loves this shit. Like this shit is banging everywhere. Like it touches everybody. You yeah. know, he was like, this is fucking insane. Like he was excited, but mind blown about it. And right. I love how when he was it was it blurred? Yeah. Blurry. Yeah, blurry. When he was just cover like, yo, blurry. I'm just fucking the cover blurry. Like it's just like when Ernest is like, Yeah, fucking I started rapping. Coming of age. I was fucking always here, always play the guitar, could always sing. It's also a coming of age, dog. Yeah. Like, listen, I seen you with the bald head when you was running around taking dabs and being a fucking pain in everybody's yeah. ass around town, right? 2011. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. obviously, the shit that dude would write songs about is the polar opposite of the dude I seen fucking totally. showing rhyming off to everybody. Totally. Else. It's like, look at my son. Yeah, right. Like, hi, he is yes. here. Yeah, he you're is right. a right. It is a coming of age. And I mean, you know, so it's like, to me, it's like, it's like where I'm at. It's like, dude, I'm fucking somebody. People tell me, oh, I miss the old jelly. Like, did you want me to go back to prison? Bro. Like, is that the fucking, is that what you wanted? Like, would you be happier if don't I got compare killed? compare me now to younger me. I'm better me now. Like, yeah. in all, I don't want to be who I was then. Now, who I was then, 100% responsible for who i am now right for but sure. who i am now doesn't want to be responsible for, for who i was what then. fucking preach baby yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. like to me it's like morgan openly loves hip-hop music like to me that's dope like he don't yeah. deny the influence of hip-hop and the shit that's coming out like that's he's listening fucking, to moneybag yo right now i promise you he don't sure. we're we riding around bro we don't listen to country music dog do you remember that day we fucking, played golf i don't know if i can talk about stuff like this but it's the truth we were playing golf and i think it was like the 12th hole 
I realized Ernest wasn't the one playing the music. So I was like, whose fucking playlist is this? And by then we'd been talking about like every song. Like yeah. we spent the whole day golfing talking about rap classic mixtapes. Yes, yes. So finally I was like, whose playlist is this? Morgan was like, it's mine. I was like, Jesus, dog. Like yeah. what an eclectic playlist. Like yeah. it went money bag. Yeah. We listened to first of all the Freddie Gibbs album, the first six holes. Yes. Straight. So yes. all we listened to was Gangsta Gibbs. Love. And I just love Freddie love Gibbs. Freddie Gibbs. Fucking, you Every know, it's morning like, I wake up and throw a gang sign. Yeah, but it's like <laughs> to me, that's no different than like you know, I think that's the cool thing to touch on what you're saying, Legos, is yeah. like, I think that the world of genre bending is here, mm. right? Where mm-hmm. like, I say this all the time. When I was a kid, when you was a kid, most of y'all in this room were young. If you wore a Eminem shirt to school, you could not come back the next day with a Metallica shirt. Yeah. You just could not. That Eminem shirt defined who the fuck you were. That was your identity. You are a rap kid. Do not come in here with no country. You can't wear no Garth Brooks shirt yeah. now. You've worn Eminem shirt. Now that's a closet full of, you got a Garth Brooks, Clint Black, Metallica, For Eminem. Sure. No. I got Ice Cube. I got a fucking NWA shirt right next For to sure. my damn Brooks and Dunn shirt. Bailey is the epitome of that too. But like my daughters who, t- listen, I went upstairs one day when she was cleaning How old is she? Room. She's 13. 13. And her playlist, because she, she grew up with me and has her own style now. I'm in the room cleaning with her. She puts on her playlist like we all consume music, hits play on her playlist, sets it down. And I shit you not, the 30 minutes we was up there, I think I heard Prince, literally, because she loves uh, When Doves Cry, because I played it for her when she was a kid. So, like, she played When Doves Cry, Ariana Grande, Cardi B, mm-hmm. which as a father was alarming, but I have to respect my kid <laughs> figuring but, out. But as a son, I yeah, love it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. As a father, I'm like... Uh, but as a hip hop guy, I'm like, she's, right. she's pretty hey, dope. You know what I'm saying? Car- Cardi's one of my, she's my favorite female artist. Oh, dude, me too. She's so fucking good. her flow, everything about energy. Her just, oh, everything about the way she talks crazy, the way she owns everything. I love when the, the first song, the first single she dropped, she just blatantly talked about got a bag, fix my teeth, yes. show these hoes that I ain't cheap. Yeah, because yeah. she knew people from loving hip hop or whatever that yes. show was. She was only gonna fuck with her about her changing her teeth. Yeah. yeah, she's just such a gangster. But I watched this kid's playlist go everywhere. Yeah, you know, and to me it was just like. That shit's over. Yeah, that's from like, streaming too. Just yeah, that's just from that's streaming. It. Like, that's it. that's, that's, that's fucking now. over, dude. Like, it's not. We're not in that world no so more. So that's like, where that's what we were talking about earlier. Because it's okay for us to like fucking money bag yo and fucking Hardy. That's yes. okay now. That used to not be okay, but now it is. Like it is. now, I have moments in my life where I want to listen to money bag yo. Yes, that's what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm a mood I'll, listener, not yeah, a genre exactly. listener. Exactly. I'm a mood listener, and I think that we were talking about it. Losers is the challenge for the both of us will be conforming enough to get on country radio, which is now what I'm currently dealing with is like, all right, fuck it. If you want to up the middle country song to get to country radio so that I can go tour on a big level and take a bus places, I'll give you that. And there's no shame in that. But and blessing to be able to do as that. Soon, a blessing. Uh. But as soon as radio gets to a point where there is I'm not saying that country radio is going to start playing pop and vice versa, but there's just some things country radio won't play because X, Y, and Z right. feels too much like X, Y, and Z or a song. Uh, I'll use heartless as an example because heartless streamed out the ass right? and it didn't, it, it was too country for pop radio and too pop for country radio. Yep. So it already streamed like a hit without having radio. So they did the Julia Michaels remix after it was already a hit and it went to pop radio and did whatever it did. But there's just like maybe two years from now, if that same scenario happened, somebody at country radio will say, well, this is a country dude singing a country song. It sounds different than Garth Brooks, but right. it's a country song. It's just written by some, with some people who have more, a broader influence of music. So heartless may be a poor example, but I just think we're close and, and radios radio is great. The country radio is awesome because they're what we live and die by. Right. And, and they do give people breaks. Right. But I just think that there's not going to be such a gun to their head, so to speak for what they have to play because of X, Y, and Z. For sure. At some point in time, they will have to keep up with streaming. Yeah. They will be like a direct competitor of streaming. And when that happens, they're going to, it'll have to, there'll be another paradigm shift. The cool thing has been watching paradigm shifts happen over the years. 
right? Like, I think about the first time I heard uh, Break Up in a Small Town on the radio, Mm -hmm. right? I just, like, I remember hearing Leave the Night on and being like, oh, that makes sense. Sam mowed the yard that I'm trying to ride around in. For sure. For sure. And I tell him him that every time I I was talking to Zach about it one day, and it's like, he, uh, you know, but there was a story to tell there. Like, they came with Leave the Night on first knowing that, Break up in a small town was going to be a huge record, but mm. it just it couldn't go first. You had to get in the in the building Put a frog first. In warm water, yeah, exactly. That's it. You get it. You yeah. know what I'm saying yeah, for yeah. sure. It's like they had to get in the building, yeah. And then they were like, now, now, just just hear us out. And then it's you know what I'm saying. Shoot, boom. You know what I mean? Because I remember when he first came in doing the talking stuff, and I was like, this is dope. But when that hook dropped, and she would get knows your name. down, and that 808 dropped, and I was like, get the fuck out of yeah. here. Yeah, because you know, at that time. Of course, Cruise had already happened. So yep. 808s had been introduced to country music. Yep. But the way Sam was doing it was like we're talking about like on some authentic shit because yeah. he grew up in a mixed neighborhood yep. and and grew up non-prejudiced of anything, playing basketball with whoever's at the court and right. fucking loving all types of music and is also a genuine good dude and a good artist and a good right. writer and he wasn't trying to be anything he's not. Right. So if a motherfucker wants to write a a country song about the last three years of his hurt life breaking up with some girl, but throw some 808s in there. Right. Why is somebody getting punished just because of the, their For drum sure. choice? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember like, when he showed up to the first CMT awards or whatever it was with those white Air Maxes, bro. that white shirt and those white sweatpants with the yes. crease down the middle. Yes. And I was like, no fucking way. Yeah. And I was just so excited at that moment. Like yeah. every time I see Mitchell in a pair of Jordans, yes, I just get fucking tickled. Yeah. Every time I see Ten Penny in a fucking pair of like fucking off whites, I'm just like motherfucker. Yeah. Yes. He feels that way too. Yeah, he should. About, about yeah, but I mean, it's you know, to me, that's just like fuck yeah, dog. Like, He's got it at the core. It's really just people doing what they want to do and what they like, musically, stylistically, like whatever. You for know, sure. Like, that's really what it is. Yeah. Back to style. Style is fucking. You know, dude. I was a. Uh, I was I was tripping whenever I seen was it was it Johnny Manziel when him and Mike just went and did busting with the boys yeah and he was wearing a Garth Brooks shirt yes and I was like but like that's fashion now yeah like who would have thought an you old could buy Garth that shirt Brooks- for two hundred dollars at a thrift store in Canada because it's a a, a legit vintage Garth Brooks tour T shirt two hundred dollars no I know it was Dead probably ass. fifty dollars no it's it, <laughs> it's fashion now yeah. You know what I mean? Like, who would have thought? You know what I mean? Like, fuck, dude, I had to secretly listen to Garth Brooks when I was in fucking high school. Yeah, pick a couldn't, side. Yeah, couldn't let nobody know. Shit, now listen, y'all, I like Garth Brooks. Don't tell nobody. Yeah. Highlighting them, my old DJ, man, him and Doobie were doing their own thing now. One of my one of my dear friends. Doobie? Still. Doobie, yes, my boy. I like Doobie. He's so I met him good. once at gyms. Yeah, he's so fucking good. How, that's how you know he toured with me for years. So him and Highlight, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know Highlight. So that's how that's how they cut their teeth and uh Highlight tells people the story now, and they're like, what do you think about Jelly doing all this singing stuff? He's like, dog, 10 years ago, that's all we listened to in his van. Like, we'd get in the tour van, and we hated him because he wouldn't play nothing but country music and rock mm-hmm. music. And we'd be like, please, just put on something. Like, I don't hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. I already, you know. So it's like, it didn't surprise any of us. You know Growing I mean? up in Nashville is a, A, we're unicorns, but right. but to be doing what we're doing and growing up here, it's like our explanation for why is a little bit unfair and different than everybody else because there is the unspoken pressure of country music that just, you you don't, I mean, you drive everywhere you see it, you country music hall of fame, country music. Dog, when you get off the plane, welcome to Nashville, Tennessee. Hi, I'm Taylor Lewan, left tackle for the Tennessee Titans. Hope you don't lose your bags, fuckers. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's dead Uh, ass. Hey, it's Trace Atkins. Welcome to the airport. Going back to what you are saying with the pressure. Um, yeah, and then bringing it all the way back to when you were walking into to rights early on. Yeah, and you were st- people were trying to put you in. Yeah. rap scenarios. Do you think that's because like like has Nashville just not evolved to a point where they don't view that as kind of a gimmicky thing where they can be like, oh, we'll just plug you in on a verse here. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know what? I think that there's still that generation of writers and producers and gatekeepers and whatnot that probably view. Because I mean, it was presented to me even when I when I'd rap on a second. My 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 recipe or whatever. Here's the secret: I write a first verse, normal country structure, chorus, country structure. I I 100 of the time 
am freestyling my second verse on a microphone just like this, probably this microphone, and we won't have anything wrote, and I'll just say run the second verse, and I'll free flow some shit that has nothing to do with the first verse flow or structure or whatever you're calling the program. That's where I bring rap to it. So there were a few times where I'd be in a session and be like, yo, do your thing on the second verse. And they would, they would present it as like, it's like playing a harmonica. Like you can sing and write, but like put your harmonica out and play. It's like, yeah. So in that regard, it is viewed as a gimmick a little bit, but I think that it's going to be happening so much. And there's other guys that aren't me that think similar to me and maybe didn't even have the same rap, rap background, but just don't abide by whatever the rules of country music songwriting are. It's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. And I don't hold that against people for saying that because yeah. they're so engulfed in this world. It's like cool as shit. It's like a guy fucking making balloon animals or something. Yeah. They just, it's like, <laughs> right. we got him here. Yeah. And well, I to me, I it's just dope music anyway. So it's like, whatever. Just like, make a good song. It's just like, make a good song. Chug Bud is the revolutionary pocket sized combination of a beer bong and a shotgun as seen everywhere on the internet. Don't just sip a beer. Chug Bud. Get yours today at chugbuds.com. Um, look, I love drinking beer. I love drinking beer fast. I've had a lot of beer drinking malfunctions in my life. I've had the fewest with Chug Bud. I've had a malfunction with Chug Bud, but it was a user error. <laughs> okay? It's because I've honest. already been drinking Chug yeah, Bud. Yeah, for sure. Okay? Yeah. You just pop it on, crack it, and chug it. Uh, can I play Flower Shops? Please. Because th th look, I'm going to play a song on the podcast today. Um, I told Jelly I would do it. And I want to. I just. This is actually a perfect segue. Full, full to disclosure. We've been talking about all kinds. We went deep today, which I appreciate. But Ernest sent me this demo. I'm sure I can yeah. say that. And as soon as he sent it to me, I was like, "Bubba, this is like. This makes me feel like old, like real heartbroken Keith Whitley country music. Yeah, like so, those classic records that were just like fucking. I'll tell you why I wrote this song. Um, I. Wasn't really doing any deep dive into sad country music or like old school country. I've done it, but John Daly, who will be on this podcast soon, um, me and him, we talk music as much as anything. And he, uh, we were sitting at the bar at Old Hickory one day and he said, I want you to hear this song. Tell me what you think. He goes, I did it. I, he goes, I recorded this song, sent it to Willie Nelson for him to listen to. And Willie sent me back a brand new version. The only thing that stayed on it was my vocal. So I got this demo. It's called Whiskey and Water. And uh, I'm somewhere between Whiskey and Water is the hook. And the demo he sent back was Willie Nelson playing that old beat-up guitar you see in every Willie Nelson picture. Yep, trigger. You can hear him breathing in the microphone while he's playing. And then Willie sings the second verse, What Nask To. And plays a guitar solo. I listened to that song probably about a hundred times, and I got into like I wasn't in a sad m mode. I was just in a sad music mode where I was like, "Fuck!" Like this is what country music. This is country music at its purest. And I told JD that I was like, "Yo, this is this is really good." So I started listening. I went back and started listening to a bunch of George Jones, and um, me and Ben Burgess were on our way out to write with Mark Holman, and. I pick him up at his house and we smoke a blunt. We got about a 30 minute drive. So we, we light up and smoke and I start listening to, I had like a George Jones essential playlist playing. I'm just playing a bunch of George Jones songs. There's one song I'd never heard called a good year for the roses. It's been a good year for the roses. And he's basically talking about me and this girl got nothing to talk about anymore. The only small talk I can even conversation I can come up. It's been a good year for the roses. Right. Because right? it's been raining. So Burgess was like, man, like, this is pretty cool. We should write something kind of like this. He was like, and we went back and forth and finally landed on a good day for flower shops. And the concept was basically, I've fucked up my relationship so much, and I continue to do it every time. My only way to fix this is I'm going to go buy every fucking flower in a flower shop. That's right. all I got. I don't have anything else to give you other than every flower I can buy. Right. So we wrote this song, and I'm going to play it. Yeah. And it doesn't have a rap second verse. It's just country music. Yeah, so it's good country music. Let's see bro. how it goes. <clears throat> Tell me if I hit this camera and fuck it up. I just need about here. Bring it this 
So it's called Flower Shop. It's a beautiful day she's been crying all night. All there's tears in her blues and bloodshot in mine. This bender's been bending, it's hell bound to break. My baby's had all she can take. So, mister, I'll take some roses. If you cut off the thorn, she can't take no more. I'll buy violets and daisies to hide all the crazy It's gonna take all you've got Oh, it's a bad day for her But a good day for flower shops Then it gets sad, it goes, uh, well, I took some pills she took the dogs Oh, it's all gone to hell She's gone to her mom's And I took up drinking Since she took the time To tell me I took The best years of her life So buddy, I'll take some roses If you cut off the thorns she can't take no more I'll buy violets and daisies To hide all the crazy It's gonna take all you've got Oh, it's a bad day for her But a good day for flower shops Then there'd be like a little Willie Nelson solo late to the party but just perfectly on time at the same time <laughs> na, na, na. and I'll take all your roses if you cut off the thorns you can't take no more I'll buy violets and daisies to hide all the crazy It's gonna take all you've got No, it's a bad day for love But a good day for flower shine Shit is fucking crazy, though. <laughs> God, duh. So, I get goosebumps in my back, to the back of my neck, to my uh, arms, dog. That's I I love that. I love that. That's one of my favorite songs I've written because I just wanted to tap into fucking country music. Right. I feel like that's country music. That's, I'm proud that's, of that. That's like I'm proud of old that. school, painful country yeah. music. Yeah. Painful with a wink, which is George did that really well. It's like yeah. he could rip your heart out. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> and, sure. And still wink at Just you. kind of a let you know, like, yep, right. yeah. I took some pills. She took the dogs. It's all going to hell. She's gone to her mom. I took up drinking since she took the time to tell me I took the best years of her life. Nobody wants to hear that shit. Yeah, <laughs> nobody yeah. wants to hear that. Yeah, your worst enemy tells you that yeah. you took the best years of their life. Oh, you yeah, feel a little sure. bad for her. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, damn. I wish you had those. Yeah, fuck, I, <laughs> I wish you at least had those. I would have took the shitty years and yeah. fucking still felt like I got my point across. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, look, I'm just I'm thankful to know you, and I'm thankful for you. Um, maybe you didn't know you were paving the way for a bunch of motherfuckers out here but you have and are and i hope that you know in five or six years people say the same about me because breaking down stigmas and just fuck stigmas dude right. just every way if we can. can fuck stigmas out of the equation For sure. then there's music's gonna get better um I think insecurities are going to start going away. If people and sit, they're not, they're going to fucking worry or care what people think this is or what it didn't. My my thing that I preach is death to the boxes. Yeah. Right. Like don't fuck them boxes. Yeah, like yeah, don't put yeah. me in any of them. I don't want to be in any of them. Uh -uh. When I when I when I when I brokered the deal that I'm working on now, I don't even want to be buried in a box. Right. I came to these people and said, "Listen, 
I want to do three projects. I want to do a country project, I want to do a rap project, and I want to do a rock project. And somebody said, why do you want to do that? I said, well, I think all three express the duality of my personality, sure. right? Sure. I said, but most importantly, because I can. You know what I mean? And as fucking crazy as that sounds, I yeah. think I can, man. Yes. You know, and it's like, dude, I don't want to, I just want to be as, listen, I spent a lot of my life not free. Yeah. I want to be as free as I can be these days, yeah. man. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. how, you know, I tell people I prefer to live my life like the feather in Forrest Gump. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, every time you look at yeah, it, it's going. I'm fucking yeah. going, baby. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I stop at the end. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think that some bitch still went in the last scene. I think it just flew off. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, let that be me. You know, so there it's it like. Now. And it goes back to the, a duality, a conversation I had with uh, Loba, Jonathan Loba, the head of BMG of uh, Broken Bow. And I was like, look, man, my father taught me a lot with the way he lived his life, Ernest. My dad would go do, every Thursday, he would do Room in the Inn or Wednesday. He would do Room in the Inn at the Methodist Church he was a member of. Mm. Every Monday or Tuesday morning, he would do men's small group Bible study, and he was the guy who brought the coffee and the donuts. That was his thing. Was and your dad some, a church on Sunday type of guy or more in the streets helping? Both. both? Gotcha. Yeah, both. But Because uh, he helped with the homeless. But gotcha. He also showed up as an usher. But yeah. I asked him one day, I said, why are you bring the coffee every week? He said, well, because I got to go now. I got a responsibility. I can't let the men not have coffee. You know, they count on me for the coffee. But this same guy has a plaque at the Tin Roof Bar mm -hmm. where he would go in there five days a week after work, get absolutely sloshed. Mm -hmm. I probably shouldn't say it, and I hope people, I don't give a fuck if you judge us or not. He'd take one for the road. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We didn't take one for the road. He'd get a cup of ice. Mm -hmm. And he had a bottle in the car. Mm -hmm. He'd pour him one in the parking lot, drop the top on his little sea brain, go. And he was a legend at this bar. Like, he'd walk in the tin roof, buddy, buddy. Like, there was, like, 30 tin roof people at his funeral. And there was, like, 200 church people at his funeral. It was, like, 500 people. He had a huge funeral. I was so, so, so happy for him. But I was, like, I had a moment where I was, like, wouldn't that be cool to be that guy? Jesus. I mean, that's the idea of being Christ-like, bro. I know. It's okay. <sighs> but, I mean, you got whatever that was because – the ability to minister to people does is not limited to to walls. Well, Speaking of a box, but it ain't, ministering to people does not happen in a box. It happens when you go out and fucking make a difference in people's lives, and you're doing that same thing, bro. Well, to me, but but to, I think to me it was like what he showed in that was the duality of who he was. That somebody could be so loved at a bar and be so loved at a church. Yeah. I think that, like, me doing a country album and a rap album and a rock album is, like, that's who I encompass. Yeah. It's, like, to be able to walk into a bar and go in there and get absolutely drunk, and I'll be the same person talking to those motherfuckers at a bar that I will be at the Folds of Honor mm -hmm. when we're doing a charitable event mm -hmm. or when I go to church or whenever I go to do this. or mm -hmm. You know, to me, it's, like, the duality of that is what's so important. It's like being able to present yourself in a way that you're so authentic to who you are, you can be that person in any setting, mm -hmm. and it don't matter and still be received the same. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, you're meeting your mother-in-law, who's clearly a Christian woman. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Treated her the exact same way I treated your father-in-law, who's obviously a Christian That's too, but a totally different kind of Christian, yeah, right? Yeah. You know? So to me, it's like, it's like letting the music represent what that is. Yeah. And I, I I broke that down to Loba, and I was like, that's how I wanted That's why the right and wrong record was so, I'm somewhere in the middle. I guess I'm just a little, a little bit of both of these things. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I fall right there between the whiskey and the water. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, I'm somewhere in between. Yeah. Like, you know, to me, that's like the coolest legacy on earth we can leave. Yes. Is to be that person. And I want to encapsulate that in my music. Yeah. That's the most important thing of music. And that's whenever he was like, why do you want to do these three projects? Like, this is why I want to show the duality of man. Because I don't know any man that's not like that. Fact. You know what I mean? I don't know any Musician dude. Musician or not. We're just talking about hum the human We're talking nature. about the human nature of man. Yeah. I don't know too many men who are not, you know, a little bit of a good husband, a little bit of a scumbag. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of a hard worker, a little bit of fuck this job. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, a little bit of a little bit of a good guy, a little bit of I'll fucking slap you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, you yeah. know, 
I think we're all got a little bit of both of those yeah. in us. You know what I and mean? There's a market for it because because of that, which is so back to the whatever way of country music is going into right now. It's like the listeners or feel like they relate more to the people singing the songs more than ever. Oh, yeah. No, no. Because the music's never touched more honesty. And motherfuckers going to walk up and be able to talk to you. Right, for sure. We're not untouchable. No. Well, the day of the celebrity's over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Like, the day of the, like, we can't, like, the day of, like, you, you used to sit in your house and be like, I wonder what Garth Brooks is doing right now. Mm-hmm. It's like when he's in that studio with Trisha with the big G in the background yeah. talking on his Instagram right now, I'm sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I see him on there every Let me fucking day. <laughs> Let me he's check. like, hey, y'all, I'm so excited. Hey, you know what I'm saying? It's hey, like, you know what I mean? Brought to you by Just For Men. Yeah, for sure. It's <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's totally. I get older, my yeah. beard gets darker. Garth Brooks, good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> We're not in that era no more. We're not in the era where... uh Morgan can go down to Kid Rocks and sing a couple songs and it'd just be like the 200 people that were there had the most special moment ever. No. No, it goes viral on TikTok yeah. immediately. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody. You don't have to wonder what Morgan Wallen's doing. Oh, we just Kid Rocks yeah. bar last night <laughs> singing fucking songs. I don't think anybody's ever wondered what Morgan's yeah. doing. <laughs> yeah. It's like we don't, you know. I, I tell people all the time when they were like, well, how come Michael Jordan was a bigger celebrity than LeBron? I was like, we see LeBron working out on his Instagram every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like seeing LeBron in person is still very exciting, but it's also extremely accessible because we feel like we know him. We know LeBron we way s- better. We know Mike. For sure. Yeah. We see him at games fucking, you know, with his son, Bronny. We know how Bronny's doing. We know what, you know, mm-hmm. we, like we know what's happening with him. Like, yes. we didn't know what the fuck was going on the with Michael Jordan. The most I ever saw uh, Michael Jordan talk was in Space Jam. I know. As that though my no, the, literally. how I felt like I knew MJ yeah. was fucking Space Through Jam. Space Jam, no, for sure. Or the headlines that were always bad. Yeah. Gambling addiction leads to father's death or, you know, crazy yeah, right. shit that wasn't even honest. It wasn't real, but it's like headline. You had this perception of who he was based on this one sentence at the top because God knows nobody actually reads the article. And if the article's wrong, it got reprinted on, you know, they did a they did a, a reprint 30 days later on page 22 that nobody ever read. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're sorry. We was wrong about that Michael Jordan thing <laughs> we had on the front page three weeks ago. Just wanted to let y'all know, but it's like a paragraph on the last page by the yeah. obituaries that nobody reads. In invisible ink. Yeah, for sure. It's like nobody fucking... You gotta hold it under the right light. Yeah, yeah. we we just lived in a totally yeah. different world. So now it's like the, the age of celebrities is there. So it's made everybody completely equal. It's like when we're at a bar right now and people are talking to us, it's like, you know, they want to take a picture and they, you know, because they want to commemorate the moment of meeting us. Like, right. it wasn't nothing like, you know, it's not like the fandom of like, holy motherfucking shit. Ernest right. and Jelly Rolls here. I was like, oh, fuck, dude, I love y'all. Listen to the podcast. Yeah, Can we take a me. picture? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it's Your like, hashtag for yeah, me. it's like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yo, I want you to say, fuck you, Cornelius. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what I'm saying? By the way, this Cornelius. dude comes up and asks for, ask us to literally, his friend's name's Cornelius. <laughs> this is He's the like, best story Can ever. you take a video of, of y'all saying, fuck you, Cornelio? He goes, we going to, he goes, I've been in 75 cities this year, and in every city, I'm having people say, fuck you, Cornelio. And, and, no, it's Cornell U. Cornell U. And yeah. I said, Cornell U, but not the university. Yeah. This is the, this is the guy. So, turns out, so what do you do? Yeah. This guy is touring the country, raiding, not raping, which <laughs> <laughs> raiding titty bars. Yeah. He's going to every titty bar in the country and, and doing like a bar store review type deal on titty bars. Listen, he's so funny. He said, he said, he's I don't know. Doing it, Listen, dude. he said raiding and not raping because when he said it, Ernest was like, that's crazy. What are you doing it for? I'd love to talk about that deeper. <laughs> right. And the guy just kind of blows it off. And Ernest goes, he said he's raping strip clubs and rape across America. I was like, no raiding. He's like, oh. <laughs> Well, not as interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, not as, I was like, Yo, what are you like, talking about? You're fucking like openly talking you about got, raping you, a strip club. You're we need on like city seventy five. Yeah. He's like, I'm, he, and I'm, gonna, I'm the listen, guy to catch you. Yeah, and I, he's he wants to be Chris and Hansen. I'm Chris Hansen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. He said, "This is." <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Why don't you have a seat? Yeah, sit down. We'd like to talk to you about last week in no, Indianapolis, I Indiana. No, I wouldn't like a slice of Yeah. <laughs> How about some canes? <laughs> would you like canes? We yeah, would you yeah. like some canes? Why canes, you dipping cane, sauce? chicken, and a condom in your car? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just in case. <laughs> I needed a ca- canes. So wait, we ended up saying, we ended up saying, fuck you, Cornell, you. We ended up saying, fuck you, Cornell, you. <laughs> but uh, like, that shit listen, uh, he, ended, he ended up saying, "Fuck you, Cornell, you." 
Yeah. Which Chris was was the guy who was like, but not the university. Yeah. He made sure to bail, bail us all In out. The video. But the yeah. best part was Ernest was so real after that. You might have to cut a lot of this shit today. <laughs> Ernest goes, Whew. Well, I'm glad we stated clearly about that. Y'all know Cornell. You was a black college, right? Yeah. He was like, that's the last thing four white guys needed to be screaming at a camera in a bar that are all associated with country music. Yeah, like, fuck, fuck you, you Cornell, Cornell, you. you. you know what I'm fuck Chris Jackson, not university. Yeah. <laughs> God. It wasn't like saying fuck Princeton. Yeah, it was right. like some shit to really, you know, because yeah. I bet everybody feels like fuck Princeton. Yeah, fuck Princeton for sure. <laughs> you know Even saying? at Princeton. Yeah. I went to Princeton. Princeton. What'd you do there? Smoked a joint. Yeah. yeah. First of all, they smelt my weed cream cross parking. You played at the, the venue right across. Was it the Froggy? Or, no, uh, no, no. This is a true story. Went I went to Princeton. No, I went to Princeton. Chelsea Handler brought me up there to speak. She hot the, in person? She is. She's adorable. Right outside of being physically attractive for her no, age. No, I know she's sweet. Yeah, no, but she like, is. She's hot in she is. She. She'll be here next week. We'll go see her if you want to. Love that. Okay, so she's. Uh, we'll go. That's my girl, dude. I love Chelsea Handler, dude. That's my. Yeah, that's my bitch. Me and my wife just. I, I miss her. her show. I used to watch her show. Oh, dude, she's the go. She's been doing Ellen shit lately. Yeah. Let me tell you a story that I probably I don't know if I can staff? tell. Fucking, she. Uh, we're doing a TV show that Chelsea Handler's producing. We're in we're you in are? we're in production now. Oh shit. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about you it. You and your wife? Care. Yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah. When I hung out with her for the Netflix special, we just got really cool and she was like, Look, I'm interested in like telling your story. I think it hasn't been told right. Let me tell it. You know, I'll put my name on it and I'll go to bat for you with the with the network. And she oh, did. That's and we amazing. signed a deal with uh, uh uh Universal Peacock. Let's go, dude. Yeah. Truth, we filmed like. Can we buy that G wagon back? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll take the wagon <laughs> back now. Actually, yeah. no, it's like I can't afford it after all. Yeah, but uh, no. So we, we she, 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 she's that good of a woman though. Yeah. Chelsea Handler is like. She seems she's always in the right people's corner. She's oh, always, she, yeah, for sure. Well, yeah. she's also a fucking nut basket. Right. I mean, we'll start yeah, there, well, but in all the good ways. She's yes. a, but she's a fucking lunatic. Yeah. yeah. She's fucking one of us. Lunatic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. She's as white trash as we are. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. I love. I feel like she's one of the boys. Oh no, for sure. No, she's one of the dudes. Yeah. Yeah. No, she's like that too. She's real. Like you know, she's funny, man. Was she, it? She, she was it her and Fifty coming back and forth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I was fucking with her about on the TV show. I was like, "What about you and Fifty? She's like, "You heard about that?" I was like, "Chelsea, get the fuck out of here." Everybody's like, heard about. We it. all know about you and Fifty. Yeah. He called you Gator. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right, he did. Hey, speaking of fifty, how about do you remember him and the Floyd beef, bro? Mm -hmm. He said, he said, what he say? I'll do something. If, if you, you can read you, two pages out of a Harry Potter book, I fucking donate five hundred thousand dollars to a charity of your choice. Fuck the bucket. Yeah, the bucket. yeah that's ALS. Yeah, that was ALS challenge. challenge. He said, if you yeah, can read two pages you can read out of two a Harry, pages, I'll yeah. donate five. He said, listen, I talked to Jimmy Fallon. I talked to Jimmy Kimmel. He said we could do it on his show. We know you can't read the Harry Potter book. We're going to let you do it on Cat in the Hat. Come on now, boy. He lit Floyd up, dog. Floyd never did it. No, fuck no. Uh -uh. But boy, I tell you, Damn. boy. boy. <laughs> Damn. Nah, I like them, did you ever have, have, do you ever have any, uh, like, have you, you've had rat beef, haven't you? Like, have you ever had rat beef turn physical? Um... I've had a lot of physical problems, but it was not rap beef. It was just rap related. Exterior, yeah, yeah, yeah. Extra yeah, it was like, rap you know what beef. it really was? In the early days when we were doing these club shows, these local promoters would put like 20 acts on them. Uh, and the problem with that is you're dealing with like 20 egos. And each each ego has about eight people there with them. Eight, eight to ten people yeah, there with them. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. feels entitled to stage time. It's everybody's city. All 20 are local, so mm -hmm. this is my city, motherfucker. You know, you deal with that shit. And then you're just, like, sleeping in the back of a van just like, dude, we're just trying to get out of here before 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah. Like, we don't want no problem. We just want to, like, perform as soon as possible and leave. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, let's not let that. And the problem is it always falls on the artist. Yeah. So it's like we quit doing openers because of that. Because, you know, you go to the, the, the booking agent, and it don't matter if you put it in your contract. No more than three openers. They're going to do seven. You know what I mean? And, and for rap specifically, yeah. for sure, country's it, pretty, not, pretty no. tight on that shit. Well, you know why though? It's a closed genre. Yeah, it's like we needed locals to sell tickets. Yeah, right. And then you have local buy-ons with shady promoters where yeah, everything right. in the country. Like the cool thing about the country business is you can have one song that's not even doing good, and you'll have a booking agent. Yeah, right. You can literally hitch the craziest shit to me in the world, dog. You can have one mediocre song that's flopping. 
and you will still have some dude at fucking William Morris that's your guy yeah. that's fighting for you to Thanks, open Austin. up. Thanks, Austin. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's like fighting for you to open up for Russell Dickerson. You yeah, know what right, I'm saying? Right. Like, you know, he's like fighting to get you on any lineup he can. I love Russell Dickerson, by yeah, the way. Right. But he's like, he's fighting to get you on a lineup. Yeah. So it's like, you know, this dude is like laying a different foundation for you. Where in the hip hop world, you're like booking shows off Facebook. Yeah, right. Like we were literally posting, if you want Jelly Roll in your town, send a message. And then we're like booking it ourselves by like street dudes who are trying to do a flip. Right. So they're like, all right, we can rent the club for a thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? Then we're going to put put Don Don and Dan Dan and Johnny Swim on here. Not Johnny Swim. They're a real group. <laughs> Johnny, whatever. They're awesome. You I like don't, Johnny don't Swim. Don't Johnny into this. Yeah, yeah, I love Johnny Swim. But it's like. You know, we're going to put these people on the acts, right? You know, we got fucking White Boy Mac on the act and fucking, you know, whatever. And you're like, cool. And then we're going to charge them $300 a piece. So they're trying to put as many people on there as they possibly can. Oh, so the, so openers are paying to play. They're paying to play. Oh, that's the hustle. Right. Because you get three openers, you already you already broke even. Right, for sure. So when you tell them you can only do three, they're like, fuck you, we're doing 10. It's an extra 12 grand for us. So, like, they're selling these opener acts, and then you show up like, hey, man, we had a contract that said we would go on by 12. It's 12, and the second act of seven have went on. We're not going to go on until 2.30 in the morning. Right. You know, and the promoter's like, well, you know, what do you want me to do? I'm like, we want to go on now. We're going to leave. They're like, okay, cool. So what do they go tell the other seven openers? Jelly Roll said y'all can't perform because they're doing bad business. Right. So now I got like now that's rappers mad at me because this promoter's doing bad business. You know what I'm saying? Because he was wrong. I'm not yes. doing nothing wrong. This might be a reason as to that. That might be what lingers that divides the country, like Music Row, from from rap. It might be just that the bullshit that comes along with it. And how I'm not gonna say every country show goes smooth, but like we're saying, like it's pretty cut and dry what's gonna happen. Oh, you know who's sure. gonna be on the lineup, you know what it's gonna be. And they're pretty fucking tight on if I'm going on at nine ten, I better be side stage at nine o'clock. For sure. Whereas with rap, which I for the reasons I love rap, is it is so loose. Oh, like, well, so fuck who, it. Oh, who are you? Oh, yeah. you just got here. Oh, you're going on. Yeah, <laughs> you for know? sure. Like, yeah, okay, glad so you showed up. We I, still think, got time. I think that's just so night and day for country. Mm-hmm suits to go to that environment right. to watch and scout and fucking, yeah. you know like if if they're the gatekeeper and they have to go sit through that and the guy they wanted to see at 10 isn't playing till 2 30 oh for sure that's a tough you can't do it no, tough. It's, it's tough to sit around and watch yeah. it's impossible man it's a bad it's a bad deal yeah so we got in a lot of fist fights yeah in those situations like yeah. a lot was like, your home homeboy there with you the dude that uh took you back last night he wasn't there for those tours but boston you've seen boston yeah, he's been yeah, there yeah. for a bunch of them and Highlight back in the day was there for a ton of them. And yeah, a lot, my my guitar player, that poor guy, seen it all the last eight years with yeah. me. That poor dude seen the best of the best and the worst of the worst. Gosh. So it's like we had a lot of those kind of issues. We never had like rap beef that got physical. Right, right. You know what I mean? We had a lot of like shit that was like petty show beef. Just shit that we had nothing to do with that we ended up having to fist fight our way out of a club because of a fucking promoter. Yeah. Now I just nobody can open. Like there's just no openers. No openers. None. Like I don't care. What about the Ryman on August seventeenth? Yeah, or September seventeenth. Am I allowed to talk about that? Yeah, I've been waiting man. on you. Yeah, I was waiting to see how the rest of the that the what the thing we can't talk about. I was making sure that it didn't end up backing up. Nope. Okay, because I was just patient I've, in case. I told everybody on my end and excited that's yeah. fucking happening. No, my end too. It's in my calendar. We've we cleared it, dog. No, yeah. it's fucking going down. Yeah. September the seventeenth. Jelly Roll at the Ryman sold out with earnest. Okay. Yep. Earn baby. And what I'm excited about the most is Ryman. My son. Coming to the Ryman. I'm going to introduce my son, Ryman, at Ryman Auditorium. Yeah. And I was telling before we started recording. Um, you're our only, you're our only, uh, you're our only support that night. That's, I, and, and dude, I just like, that's a dream come true. Yeah. Not only to be playing at the Ryman, which I stood on that stage in the third grade in between set changes during the Opry and looked out at the mother church and was like, I want to do this when I grow up. I don't even know what this is. Right, but, I, but I this is this. what I want to do. Um, that's special. It's special that my first time playing the Ryman is with another Nashville cat, right? Who I look up to and love. Thank you. And the third of the third coolest part of it is on some Nashville rap shit. Bro. Oh my god! Say, tell the stats you said on bus earlier today, dude. We'll be the uh, we'll be the first Nashville rap act to ever play the Ryman. 
will be the third national rap act to ever play it. I was uh, preceded by Wu Tang and Common, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll be one of I think less than ten locals that have ever sold it out. Man, I think Chris who was hanging out with earlier falls in that. I think Mitchell's coming right Mitchell, after me, so, so he'll be in the top ten so too. My second time playing the Ryman. God, I'm opening for Mitchell Fucking, on October 10th on ten ten. That's 10. so dope, dude. So I mean, it, on some that's some I predict. God, I predict now that that's some God depending stuff. on what records. Depending on how much you release for the next six months, that you'll sell it out next year by yourself. I would love to. It's just a, already a dream come true to yeah. get to even stand on that stage, but then to play it. The two times I play it, we're guaranteed, both. are with fucking local boys, local one you've known for brothers, th- twenty bro. some years, yes. one you've known for more than ten. Yeah, that's so awesome, I mean, that's bro. on some that's some supernatural. No, it's God a dream shit. for everybody, yeah. man. It's exciting. I'm excited to play some of our records that night too. Yeah, so it's gonna be good. It's going to be different, dude. It's going to be fucking up. It's, it's going to be, be different. People that come to that show know I'm, that, too. I, I'm even bringing a uh, different production. Really? Mm-hmm. You got Cody? Every other show. Is Cody with you? No, we're doing, uh, what's the name of the company? We're, we're working with 44 Designs. Cool. And uh, they, they did our stage set for the rest of the tour, but that night in particular, well, you won't see the, every other show you'll see the same set the rest of the year, but this one. Yeah, you got to make it special for the. It's going to be totally different. Do you know what you're going to wear? Have you already thought about Listen, it? Listen, man, I don't know, man. I'm so. Do you stressed. think? Are you a type of guy that picks out outfits in advance? Because I'm a big like set it out the night before. Guy. No, I'm like, well, you got so much more. Like, you can fit better clothes than me. Bro, not so I'm limited in my choices. Not a lot. No, yeah. I mean, like, I when you're fat, your choices, fats, yeah, but we're different fats. But you understand, there's that. anything past a 36, yeah. 30. We're fucking Legos double- has unlimited choices. We don't. Yeah, yeah. You right. know what I'm saying? It's like you know where he can be like the the the, the world is my dipping branch. Yes. We're like, dude, I don't know, man. I got like 10 outfits. People that, that are circulate. built like mannequins have an yeah. unfair shot at life. Yeah. I'm built like fucking a Mac truck. I don't know. Like, yeah. they, like I can see something on a mannequin and be like, I get how that would look great on somebody. Yeah. And somebody be like, yo, you should try that on. It's a cool shirt. I'm like, I already see it in my head. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not going to work for me. It's a cool shirt. Yeah. It's not a good look. Coolest shirt ever. <laughs> not for cool, me. Cool shirt. Yeah. But um, I, I decided... This summer, especially all the outdoor festivals I'm playing, dude, I'm wearing wife beaters. It's a fucking tank, I love that you tank do that. top summer for me. I um, I started to shave my beard off last night. Spurt of the moment. It's always spurt of the moment. There's never like a long plan before I shave my beard, but it was just getting really itchy and annoying. So I went and did the first strip with the Manscaped 3.0 and uh, the trimmer. It was great. 4.0. 4.0. So I went ahead and uh, made the first little run through at the beard with the lawnmower 4.0, by the way, Manscaped. And it looked good. I, I did one, and I was like, okay, we're making progress. We're committed now because I see skin. I, I haven't seen skin since the March or whatever of last year. And I go for it, and I do the other one. I was like, ha this would be funny, little goatee, sideburns. And then I looked at it, threw these shades on, looked in the mirror, I said, I have to go. I need to listen to the Marshall Tucker band like right now, dude. I immediately like immediately edged up the the chops over here and kind of like tiptoed in to the den so there was like a full body mirror. I could like get the whole perspective. Anyways, fell in love with it. I was going to go all the way off and just do a mustache and I just don't like it that much to where I'm just going to deal with a little itch. And I don't know if we're going to keep it. No, I loved it. I love that. I love that when you showed up to the studio the day, you had it on like a fucking... Like unbuttoned. A, unbutt- I, just dude, completely unbuttoned. What, putting a shirt Fire on is not going to hide too. my gut. Yeah, for sure. Why not just let it breathe? Yeah, I feel for like sure. Let it, let, let it get some air. I'm not going to put a t-shirt on. And what was on. funny about that to me was you wasn't like... You were like out. Yeah. Like that's what you were wearing. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. It wasn't like in your driveway. Like yeah. I wasn't your only stop that day. I think I was your last stop. Like you had been moving the yeah. whole day. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That is how you left the house. Like no, you, I can imagine you walked into gas stations like that. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, you yeah, went yeah. somewhere and grabbed a drink like that. Yes. You walked into other writing sessions like that. Yes. Like you went to Walmart possibly yes. like that. Yeah. If, that's I, if you <laughs> see me with my shirt unbuttoned, it started unbuttoned. Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. <laughs> you didn't just gradually throughout the day yeah. let it go i was like yeah no he just, just doesn't give a fuck right now yeah yeah so, so i got pulled over hey, for driving without a shirt once check. that's illegal so first of all it's funny because if i'm talking to a cop at 5 30 in the morning it's all bad except now that i have a kid i took him out for a like a 5 a.m drive normally it's like midnight but delaney and me swap shifts so i get up at five and ryman's like not going down so i throw him 
in the truck and we're just going to take a cruise. And it was like right around, right about sunrise time. And I think you had just tweeted beautiful morning in Nashville. And so I knew that you were on shift and I was already like down near Broadway. So I hit him and I was like, yo, where are you at? And he told me like words. So I saw it, put it in the phone. I was like, it was only like five minutes. So I head that way and I see a patrol car take a left at a light. And I was like, I took a picture of it. I was like, this is you. And before I could even respond, I guess he saw me in his deal and he hit the U-turn. First of all, automatic anxiety attack. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, know the guy. Like, I know the guy. Like, if that wasn't him, I, I might have <laughs> <Yeah>. fucked up. <laughs> that dude turned around. I was like, this better be blah. Um, but yeah, get out. I'm driving around shirtless. Got my kid in the back car. I'm actually heading to Mike's to go smoke a cigarette and watch the sunrise yeah. with my son. So I, I ended up parking it second. And third. But me and Blas meet up, talk, kick it, whatever. And then I had uh, I head to Mike's and go down there, park sunrise coming up i'm out there on the porch at mike's it's my baby they're having there's the end of their party and it's the beginning of my day and it do right. the, the dichotomy of talking about duality yeah. so I'm, I'm coming up the elevator at mike's my kid in a stroller conked out walk in and there's like two straggler girls who are there and then like you know like whatever the remnants of a of a long night is out on the porch. The music is extremely too loud for anything. And the girls are like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Wait, what? You know, it's like the double yeah. take of like, they thought I was just pushing a stroller at first right. and then they realized that I actually had a baby in it. Yeah. I'm like, Oh yeah, it's my kid or whatever. And then blue comes from around the corner and he's like, you ready? I was like, yeah. He goes, yo, take me back to Foley. So I, I was only there for five minutes. I literally walked up there, picked up blue, took him back home, dropped him off. Which and one's then, blue? Did I meet him yesterday? Uh, no. He wasn't the guy in the British outfit. No. Blue, blue is one. Of, blue <laughs> that is, happened, by the way. Interesting. No? Yeah, Char totally. Charlie Handsome's brother showed up wearing a damn colonial costume. He was dressed up like George yeah. Washington. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, it was fucking nuts. No, but yeah, it, I don't know how we got there, but any shirtless when I when I saw I was literally just driving around completely shirtless at five in the morning because I didn't I, w I was in my PJs I was just taking a drive and then I was like oh what was you doing just up roll with my son he loves a, if he won't if he's like restless I put him in a car seat and drive and play music and he'd just yeah. go straight down yeah. so I was like that I was just on my cruise and then yeah. knew that he was out and about so I went and link it up and you were like, while I'm here, I know a hot party spot. We can watch the sunrise. <laughs> yeah, right? was like, was like, well, I'm out. My wife's still asleep. So yeah. <laughs> might, might as well go to Broadway at five in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Catch the last vibe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See how bad it really gets. So Ryman, Ryman, he's going to grow up and uh, have no idea that his dad's been trying to put him on since jump. Right. <laughs> it's like, he's going to know. Like uh, me and Morgan went to the Virgin Hotel the other day before the first NASCAR race. I texted Morgan. It's like 10 in the morning. He's like, yo, we're heading to the Virgin upstairs. It's, and it was, uh, me, Morgan, Bob Minery, and my son. Do you know Bob Minery personally? I do now. Okay. Like y'all got each other's phone numbers? No, but Instagram, but we pulled up Morgan and Bob are getting out of their SUV and I'm getting out of my truck. We all walk into the Virgin together, like three, three ducks and then the driver security and people are looking at this crew like it's like a scene from hangover because it's like it's literally say. that's exactly what it is because yeah. we're getting on the fucking hotel elevator with me morgan bob Minery, my son and security we get up we go it's 10 a.m they don't start serving drinks till 11 until it, unless we're there right, right, right. <laughs> they're like okay we got so a, we got an area for you code. i'm like dude i hope one day i can look ryan and be like dude you had vip access like <laughs> way early before you yeah, needed sure. it yeah so you're gonna do your chores i was taking you to bars you wasn't supposed to be at yeah. an hour before they were supposed to serve when you were two months old yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were being held by the security driver yeah for sure well, i'm having a good time yeah yeah oh, um, the baby. but yeah shirtless i don't believe in shirts free the nipple yeah a little different for me, man, because that thing's really, a really saggy. Me, yeah. <laughs> a little saggy, man. I take my shirt off on the internet. You take it off, they're like, ah. Uh, I take mine off, they're gonna like me. <laughs> take my shirt off, the ah. Yeah, yeah. I take my shirt off, they gonna catch me on fire. Oh they gonna light God. the big dude on fire. The internet is ruthless. Oh, huh? dude, TikTok's the worst. TikTok yeah. don't TikTok give TikTok and a Twitter fuck. are both like, oh, dude. They listen. don't care. Like they don't. They're willing to tell somebody to kill themselves and. 
hope they do. No, for sure. And then if they do, they'll joke about that. No, for sure. <laughs> like TikTok is so rude. No, it's the worst. Twitter's bad, but TikTok's the worst. Because Twitter, there's a little bit of a backlog where I can go see who you are and figure yes. you out. TikTok user number seven seven six nine seven two three four five seven six two one zero zero thumbs zero likes. It's like you could be like, dude, I'm having a rough day. TikTok, I'm just you know, I just need somebody to, I just needed to vent this. My Do grandmother it. died, and somebody's like, oh, bitch, deserved it. Kill yourself now, fat ass. Yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. what? Yeah, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what kind of human what? is sitting at home? Yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, yeah, bring yeah. on the pod. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but that's the other thing, too. It's like, I, for those examples, there's a reason they're not showing their face. Oh, yeah. And it's not because they're somebody. Here's my <laughs> deal, though. Even like, even, like, even, like, from an anonymous standpoint, like, what a dirty spirit you have to be. Ugly. To, like, comment on a stranger's post. Yeah. About that, like, it was so much easier for you to just scroll. You took the like time. you had to maliciously be such a fucking evil hearted human to stop on that post, click the comment button, think of the meanest thing you could think of, type it out and send it send like you are the fucking scum of the earth. Yes. Can we use that clip? Yeah. Can we make that. sure that clips one we yeah, post we'll on it yeah. on TikTok? Yeah. Yeah. If you're the guy on TikTok who does that, like that is the worst kind of human. Yeah. That they exist on Instagram on too, and they're on every social media platform. Way more on TikTok. Though. Yeah, of course. They are fucking running TikTok. The people yeah. who just like my daughter has got. She had a tooth thing when she was a kid. Where I saw you talking about this. I got my tooth pulled down with the chain. I didn't have yeah. a front tooth for three and a half years. I'm a bre- it was all fucked up. Oh, dude. So go ahead. You get I, I saw it. you so going on that. She had a tooth that came in that because her baby tooth wouldn't get out at all. We couldn't get it removed. It was stuck. They, they didn't know what to do. The other tooth automatically shifted over. They had to surgically remove the baby tooth. Yep. The other tooth had shifted over. So she had a cross tooth. This is going to be a five-year braces thing. Mm-hmm. Did she have to have a chain, move it back? Is it, are they tightening Slowly, the chain? Slowly, every week. That's, that's for sure. I did that. No, Been for sure. Sh- yeah. yeah, she is going through it. Yeah, it's miserable. That poor kid. And what I love about her is she don't care. She smiles. Yep. Like she is just a happy kid. And this late, and people say stuff about that. I'm like, first of all, yeah, you would die to have the courage that kid has to smile. Like you would die to be happy enough that you know your teeth are in the middle of getting fixed and you still smile. Smiling big. You know what I mean? Like you still are just happy. Like that's why you're saying mean stuff because in your dark spirit, you can't understand yeah. somebody being happy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that bothers you. You know what I mean? It's like I say that all the time about dudes that hate on Jelly Roll. Like, listen, dudes, that, especially when a dude calls me fat, oh, I get it. You spent your whole life eating fucking rice and kale and doing sit-ups for me to come, your girlfriend to want to fuck me. Yeah. And how yeah. fucking, how do you feel as a human? Yeah, and you're still You know what impotent. I'm saying? Literally. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and you still fucking suck at life. You yeah. went through all that just for your girlfriend to want to fuck me. Yeah. To want to hit on me and my wife. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'd fucking be saying some hater shit too. Yeah. But it's like fucking... TikTok, ruthless. I've been a part of some ruthless. YouTube can get ruthless. Yeah. Because it's a lot of anonymity there. Yeah. You know, but it's not as ruthless because it's got a community base. Right. Where TikTok has no community base, it's the fucking wild, wild west. Yeah. You Dude, they will light your ass up on TikTok. Yeah. But I'll also tell you this, they'll rally behind you. For every person who says fuck you, it's 30 people who tell them to go fuck them. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's yes. awesome. You yes. know what I'm saying? So that group of people dude, is awesome. The negative comment algorithm... I think I was talking about this with Shay because Dan and Shay caught so much flack for like one of their TikToks or whatever. And it's just like one mean comment. And then that's the first comment you see on the comments. So people just see that and they're like, I'll triple down. Yeah, for I'll sure. triple down on that. Yeah. No, excuse me. I'll triple down. Yeah. And then next thing you know, you're just scrolling for three minutes and it's nothing but fucking, oh my God, negativity. For sure. <laughs> and sometimes that negative comment ends up in the top. Not because of the engagements of likes, but because of the comments of people telling that person go fuck themselves. Yes. So one person could be like, with my wife, she gets the you're a gold digger a lot, which is fucking hilarious because people knew our story. It was the polar opposite. Yeah. I might have been <laughs> yeah. the gold digger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's like the wife is like, you know, like you're a gold digger. And it'll be like 70 comments of people like, fuck your mom. They've been together five years. He was dead broke when he met her, you dumbass bitch. But because of those 80 comments, it's got enough engagement. Like, well. 
the algorithm goes, we should make that up top because people seem to yeah, <laughs> really yeah, react yeah, to whatever yeah, this yeah, is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. The no, algorithm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes, the algorithm. The algorithm. Yeah, no, dude. It's fucking TikTok is a fucking ruthless spot, dog. Gosh. You're crushing on there, though. Cheers to that. Hit or miss. Hit or miss. TikTok, that's, that's what crazy I love about thing. TikTok. Because, yeah, I could post, I could think I have a heater post going out on TikTok, and then it's like, you know, 3,000 views. Or I could just post something randomly, and then it's 200, 300,000, or, or, mil- like, you, you, thank you, you are in the algorithm. Right, yeah. Because whatever we post with Jelly Roll is like 4 million views. Right. <laughs> I could post the exact same thing without you, and it's yeah. getting 20, 20. Yeah, just twenty. I don't, <laughs> just twenty dude, views. I get, Eric called me after we posted yeah, some did. Of the clips on the account on the pod yeah. account, and he was like, "Bro, what are you doing?" I was like, "You like, paying for views?" I was like, "No," and he was like, "I'm posting the same things, and I don't understand why yeah. it's exploding." No, yeah. it's fucking nuts. Yeah, it's yeah. a. Uh, I, I love it. I love TikTok. It's been good to me. I can't complain. But I mean, minus the haters, but. I've had a great run at TikTok so Fuck far. I've had, yeah, I've had a great run at TikTok. It's You're having a great run. Look, um, I love it though. I, my wife does it. She's funny. To me, it's like I love. I got into TikTok for one reason. I could be silly there. Like that was important to me. You know what I'm saying? Was have, like, were you fucking with Vine? You were doing other things when Vine was. I miss me. Vine. I mean, but you know what? The, you know, little known fact. That's where we talked about Upchurch. I'm still gonna link y'all. We Upchurch. We, we finally linked on Instagram. We we're texting now. Good, good. Yeah. Upchurch is um. You know, that's where he popped. Yes. A lot of people don't know Dude's that he's funny as shit, bro. That dude is fucking hilarious. You know what else, though? What I respect about church is a lot of things. One, he's got the work ethic I've never seen. His yeah, work ethic is insane. But two, church is like that dude is back to the work ethic, really. I mean, the music's dope, too. But back to the work ethic. Church never stops working. Yeah. Like I like I I just won't post for a long amount of time just because of my own mental health stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. I do it if church don't post, I worry about his mental health. Yeah, like that dude's posting religiously. Yeah, every platform, every day, all day, constantly, updates and speaking candidly at all about time. He'll everything. Fifty three story long on his Instagram, and, all and I'm of, tuned in. That's why I found I was with some of his people at um at whatever that festival was I played a few weeks ago. Uh, tailgates and tall boys, tailgates and tall boys, yep. and uh, some of his homies came up and was like, "Yo, you got to meet Church. We're doing dabs as the dab people or whatever." The dab brothers, that's right. That's my boys. And uh, yeah, so I, we finally got linked on Instagram, and I'd messaged, I'd responded to several of his stories to no avail, and then uh, he was like, "Holy shit, I didn't know you'd been like hitting me up. What up, skin?" Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. He was like, "Yeah, we got to kick it because look, me and him." Talk about not having the same audience and me having fans that would not like him and vice versa. Right. I don't give a fuck about that. Right. I think dude's talented and funny and a and a good hang. For I, sure. And I haven't even I haven't hung with him yet. Right, I already right. want to hang out with him. For sure. Yeah. No, no, great guy. But he's he 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 was vined. He vined. Yeah. Once it started working, he just when he sticks to stuff, dog, he's I'd give anything to have his confidence to constantly. Yeah. It's my mental health shit, but I get in that phone for about a week and go strong, and then I'll be like, man, I just do not have the aptitude to do this for another day. Yeah. So I know if you want to go listen to the mental health talk, go back and bust in with the boys and listen to the back 15, 20 minutes of that. But for this, like your mental health episodes, I, everybody's are different, but my mine is kind of in the same realm of just shutting down and shutting off. Like, do you go into a sad, depressive, or angry, depressive state? More sad these days. I used to, I, back to anger management, we were joking about that earlier, but you know, I dealt with my anger. In 2016, 17, is, I had an incident that I, I don't like to recap, but it wasn't hitting a woman. Let's start there. But I put my hands on somebody that I shouldn't have put my hands on. And I was just infuriated. And in hindsight, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. The crime wasn't worth the punishment. Mm-hmm. I just flashed out. And then I had a moment of recounting because I lost this relationship with this person for a long, like never got it back really. You know, they said they forgave me after I went through therapy about it. You know what I mean? But they've never, this man is still just like, he won't fuck with me though. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's cool that you forgive me and that's peaceful, but. In fact, I can still never get you on the phone again. Kind of bothers me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I had a moment where I was like, I don't want to be that guy. I started thinking about how many times I flashed out like that. 
Yeah. Like moments where you don't realize where I would just get mad and I then next thing I know I'm physically grabbing somebody or something. Like, right. you know, I talked with my hands and on site. Just yeah. didn't even think about yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like didn't even like I was like, I don't want to be that guy. So I really worked on that hard the last three years. Mm-hmm. To the point now where it's almost the opposite problem. Like now you've got to really rile me up. Like I'm so zen now. It's like I'm so just refused to be like angry. Like, mm-hmm. like I've made a decision to myself that I'll never let you get me mad enough to punch you again. Like you have to be really wanting to fight me. Like you have to be standing to over me, me calling me. A, yeah. You got to be standing over me calling me a bitch. Yeah. For me to put my hands on you now. Yeah. Where back in the day you could have just said something I interpreted as slick that wasn't even slick. Yeah, and I'd be like, "You want to go outside, motherfucker?" You know what I'm saying? Because I was always fat, I was always insecure. I always thought people looked at me like some fat dude that couldn't fight, or you know what I mean? Like I just go back to my childhood moments of like people picking on me just to chip them. It was the little man syndrome, but for fat people. Yeah, you know, I'm not big. I'm fat. There's a difference. I'm not like a big dude. It's like, oh, you know, like I'm a fat dude. Yeah, and I think little dudes are not little dudes, but smaller dudes look at me like, oh, I whooped the shit out of that fat motherfucker. Ain't got nothing in him. (laughs) And I went through that in middle school. You know. So it's like I was. So I got rid of the anger. Now my depression has always been more of a just like down. When you send me that that message that your boy posted, the homeboy that raps, mm-hmm. Cal, Cal, right? That touched my soul. Yeah. Dog. Like I have days where like, where to, like he said, just hitting unsubscribe to an email was rough. Yeah, too like, much to handle to even go. Dude, it's the, like, yeah, dog, like. Don knows it. He works for me. It's like, dude, I'll go weeks where Don just can't get me on the phone, dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm just sitting there like, and nobody knows why. They think I'm just off golfing or something. You know what I mean? And yeah. I might be. Yeah. But I'm just, I don't, I don't, I don't want to deal with it right now, man. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I just don't. Even if it's nothing, just I'd yeah. rather not deal with it. I'd rather not deal with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, the ability to have a conversation about it, A, is already... 10 yards down the road than somebody who's not willing to have a conversation right. about it. Um, I also think that it's, it's different. Taylor's right when he's saying that everybody goes through it, but there, there are levels to this. Shit oh yeah. We're like, yes, people have bad days, but like sometimes people have bad years, like consecutive, you know, like, yeah, you know, sure. like bad, like, and it's not even, it's unfair. I, I yeah, sure, but and, and chemical things mm-hmm. because yeah. like Delaney and she she'd say the same thing. Delaney really deals with anxiety and depression and always has. That's like we, me and her joke about postpartum depression. She had prepartum depression. You right, know, it's right, like, it's right, like right. I can't tell. Just it's just depression. So right. I think that the the best thing people can do to forward any kind of help for anybody at all levels of whatever depression or mental illness is literally conversation. Right. Because even if somebody's not going to want to talk because they're in the middle of it, something will resonate in the back of the head that there is one other person that is willing to talk about it. Right. And because where it gets so dark when you're down is the being alone and wanting to be alone, right. not needing to be, but right. wanting to be. wanting to. Um, so I, I just hope, for anybody that's listening, feel free to like message if you're going through shit like this. I'm I'm willing to hear you out or whatever because I know that with extreme high, like for creative people like myself and and you two, the extreme highs are great, but the lows are extreme as well. How we fly the counselor we fall. at Cumberland Heights mm-hmm. drew drew it out on a whiteboard for me. He was like, "What you're dealing with is this." Yeah. He was like. He gave me, I was prescribed antidepressants because he was like, the antidepressants will make your swings more like this. Right. Now I don't take those. I smoke weed and fucking. Holistically medicate, yes. which, is, which is cool. But too. I, I get it. I mean, if people are chemic, I personally am not an antidepressant guy. Right. But there are people that don't need to be ashamed to take antidepressants. If, you're, if your chemicals are knocking you off walls and you're thinking bad thoughts more often than not. Have a conversation with somebody and be willing to get help and know that I, I think we both would speak for this. Right. Uh, you're not alone. You're definitely not alone. Taylor, Taylor's gone through it. There, there's, there's men's men that are not afraid to admit that we go through shit. And there's people right. on the other side of this camera that I know have gone through shit and are going through shit and fight it 24-7. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, too, because yeah. what I tell people is it's never it doesn't always or seldom is it even triggered by something. 
Yeah, it's right. not like there's an event that right. makes people like, oh, that depresses me. Like, yeah, you just wake up. I just wake up on a fucking sunny and seventy degree day that I'm supposed to do a bunch of productive shit, and I'm just like, I don't yeah. want to deal with that today. Yeah, and and you, you know, know what I'm saying? Like, the I quick fix is like, we'll go out, go outside, and take a deep breath, and yeah, for sure, and think about the little things you have. Yeah, but yeah, fuck no. Right, yeah, think, sure. think about all the good things. That's De- Delaney and I talk about all the time where it's like somebody to be like, well, look around. Your life is so good. Right. Yeah, but my life is actually in here. Right, like, I understand right. that, like, my scenario. And that's different. also very subjective. Yeah. I argue that point with people all the time yeah. is that what bar- what are you gauging good? Mm-hmm. Like, what is success to you? Like, what is happiness mm-hmm. to you? Like, what is, you know, like, we're talking about very subjective words here. So like, don't look at me and tell me what I got. Right. You know what I mean? Like you don't fucking know anything about yeah. what I consider good. About what you think I have. Yeah, for sure. Like yeah. do you have, you, if you think this is what I think is good, I'll burn this motherfucker down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't give a fuck about mm-hmm. this. The things you think I give a fuck about that are good, I'll torch them. Mm-hmm. Fucking walk away. Yeah. Never look back. Like I don't give a fuck. I'll never look back like fucking... Like the Bible told me, I'd be Lot's wife. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like I'll, stone. yeah, I'll fucking, yeah. I'll never do it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like so, don't tell me I got it good because of what you perceive as the good thing. Right. That's not necessarily the case here. Like yeah. I'm talking about something happening between ears. Yes. Something that's happening not out ears. This yeah. isn't something I'm hearing that's making me feel. Something this that way. I live with way more than anything else. For sure. Ever. This is yes. like something that just I don't know what triggered it. Mm-hmm. I sure right. I should be having a great day. Yes. Fuck. It's a great day. It's fucking sunny and seventy two, and by your standard of good, kids, everything good house, is great. All these things for sure. None of that matters when. Why am I? Then this is what I'm talking. I'm going to therapy about right now, and I'm trying to figure this out. And this is like a brutally honest conversation. Why am I further along in life than I've ever been? Happier as far as in my marriage and with my child than I've ever been, but fatter than I've ever been. Same. Same. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a Bro, moment there that's like, you know, 100%. like fucking like explain, like make me understand this. You know is what it, I'm saying? Is it and maybe I'm maybe I'm projecting my own excuse for what it is, but like like I was talking about earlier on bussing was at, there was a point in my life where I was in great shape, but I didn't believe I was. I thought I was fat. Right. Now I know I'm fat, but I'm comfortable with it. Right. And so exactly. I'm wondering if being comfortable because everything else is going fine, where it's like, right. fuck, I got where I am, not because I'm skinny. Right. For sure. So I'm happy being this. I think there's a piece of that because it's like, I definitely couldn't be like, if I wasn't dealing with success and the level of which I'm dealing with it, which is a minute level, but once again, subjective, I think it's a lot. It's but I have friends who look at my success. Yeah. But I have a friend who look at I have friends though that we have both have friends. When people say, dude, you're famous, Ernest, you're famous, you're like, no, hold on. Yeah. I've got friends that are famous. Right, right, right. I'm not fucking famous. Yeah, you know I what I'm saying? Like, famous friends. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I got friends that can't go to Walmart. Yes, right. I am fucking okay. I just got people yeah. to fuck with me and I fuck with them back. I got yeah. dudes that can't lead a crib. Yes. You know, so don't call me famous. That's a, but it's like, but I think my six, but if I wasn't having a minute amount of success, like, would I be more focused on it? Like, is it less of a, like, I don't give a fuck what you think about me or how yeah. I look. You know what I mean? Like, is it a fuck it factor there? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But it's something I'm trying to figure out. That's and I want to figure point, out because I also want to, you know, I want to figure it out. Whatever. Yeah. I don't want to be fucking this fat forever. So yeah. I got to figure it out. Yeah. And I, it goes back to what made what made me trigger that post was I was up on my true jelly roll schedule like six in the morning. I wrote it at six and posted when I woke up. But I was looking at pictures and videos from over the years. I don't know why I put myself down that wormhole. Of I've misery. done that same Anyways, thing. Bro. Right. It'll fuck your whole shit up. It's never good. Never healthy for me, at least. Especially at four in the morning. Yeah, for sure. And I was like, yeah, it was where my mind was at at yeah, that moment. Yeah. But I was like, man, I was seeing videos of me whenever I was like smaller and just looked really jovial. Of course, I'm filming myself for Instagram. So obviously I'm showing the better side mm-hmm. of me. Nobody sees me on Instagram having the meltdown, right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, but it's like, you know, I'm looking at that and I'm like, I don't understand. Like, I don't even, I, I don't have half the confidence to be that dude in my Instagram camera right now. Like, I don't have a quarter of the confidence that dude had four years ago. And then I started looking at pictures, and you can literally watch me get really fat, get skinny. Get really fat, get skinny. Get really fat, and that's where I'm stuck at now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 so yeah. it's like, yeah. but if history repeats itself in the next year, I'll get fucking skinny. Yeah. But it's like at some point in time, I want to pick the healthy one and stay there. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying. Is the reason too, like, because like the physical, like, look appearance thing of it for me is out the window. Where it's like, 
I don't give a fuck. I'll be the shirtless guy at any function, obviously. Right. Now. But I would like to fucking be able to be active with my kid when he's older For and running sure. around. Well, I'd just like to see my dick. Yeah, that's You know what I'm saying? Like, well, God, it'd be great. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If somebody it's has to. It take, it's going to take some fishing. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Taking a piss these days is a chore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fuck, I'm taking a piss these days is taking a chance. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I might just let it dribble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It might just fucking just, just stand over the commode and just let it. Just however gonna, it comes out, yeah. it'll figure itself yeah. out. You know what I'm saying? Shower. I'm not, yeah. I'm not yeah, going to. I'm not every time. Yeah, you take 30 shower. showers a day. I know I drink two gallons. Gallons of water. It's fucking, <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking so much easier yeah. than fishing my dick out in a commode. Yeah. Fucking all reaching around. It's got to be there. Up, oh, up. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Oh, Which here we go. Which leads That's me. It. If you don't have a bidet. Yeah, for sure. A yeah, bidet's the best thing. Look, do you got a bidet? I do, and I sold him no. on a bidet. I sold Hardy on a bidet. Mid podcast, I was telling them that bidets have changed my life because nobody needs to do all this standing up and trying to grab your ass. You cheek never get there. It. I've never got there. And good. I, th I throw a fucking goddamn. I just turn the knob, and Blaz has exactly what I have. You turn the knob, and it's the difference between sitting there without a friend and then having a friend. It's just, it's just, Listen, how did you line it up? I'm sitting there on the toilet, and I just twist. No, no, I'm up. saying, how did you figure out the exact spot it, the asshole was? It, it, it's, it sends it right to your. It has. I what guess, I'm saying is, because I'm a big guy and I'm guy sitting guy, different on this commode, how do I know it's okay, not? You're at you. You might be taking up more space on top of the toilet. Your <laughs> asshole right where it was, and you were a child. Okay. So you're there. <laughs> yeah, this your, your asshole doesn't go further. And they set that thing up to where you're guaranteed it's going to be within a centimeter or two of right in the center of your asshole. So all you might have to do is just a little shift. Yeah. And that's the fun part, because then you get to run it. Oh, dude, listen. I, I'm, I'm, I know, I, listen next thing I know, I'm riding a water stream out of my toilet. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you're over here. Oh, yeah. yeah, fuck. Can you buy them? <laughs> are they for sale? Where uh, are they? At? You can. Yeah, no. dude wipes. It's dude wipes, and it's like, what is it? Hundred bucks, something like that. You, bucks. Easy install. You never wipe again. You don't want to. You go to public restrooms and be like, Pedals. do you feel wet afterwards? No. No way. No, dude. And I, and I, I double down. With you can double down if you want, but I'll tell you what. Baby wipes are important, dude, because yeah. Struggle says this all the time, and it's weird to say, but it's real. You can wipe your ass a thousand times with regular TP. You hit that baby wipe one time, and I promise you, you're still going to see something. Yes, yes. Some baby, baby wipes, wipes are good. It. I wiped my ass that dude wipe earlier. It was but pretty look, pretty sensational. Look, bro, you're going to get a bidet, and you're going to think. Today, because on the yeah, way home. Yeah, because everybody sure. I've told to get one gets one, and life changes. And here's I found a new here's a feature that I didn't know happened. God, I wish I'd have had a shit at your I house had, yesterday. I had that would have been such a cool discovery. I had trouble. <laughs> I had trouble. This is super just being earnest, but you had no problem shitting today. You were oh, shitting. Man. You were peeing out of your ass. I wish I would I, stop. I couldn't pinch one off for the life of me this morning, and it was just sitting there, and I kept waiting. And da da. Guess what? Blasted that motherfucker with water. And we're moving on. No dude. way. We're moving on. I had that one little deal. It's like an enema. Like, come on, come on, come on. It is. <laughs> it's it like is. an enema. I kept, I was like, dude, it's like a, the equivalent to like, if you're trying to throw a cheese it in my mouth. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's me with the water. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> no it. fucking way. Landed. And there's different, I mean, you go full ride. It's like volume, right? Yeah. You go full blast or you go half where blast. Does the, where does the thing sit at? Right here. You're sitting on the toilet. The toilet seat's right here. It's got a volume knob. Can, is it movable? As soon as you're done. Nope. You're just right here. Turn it I just up. think about having to reach around. So. You don't, you're not reaching around. It's a lot of movement you're with big fella. You're just okay. right here. Okay. okay. I'm in. I'm buying one right now. It's a feature that says uh, other stuff. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. way. It's, it's It'll rinse your balls I'm and fucking all that. in. Yeah. And you God, can, I'm You in. can just draw off with a towel if you go for the other stuff. But I mean, yeah. you can just, it's like having a pressure washer for your asshole. Stop it. I'm fucking getting one right now. It's the best I've conversation sold, ever. Sold, you need commission. I've now yeah. sold three dude How are you not sponsored by these? We're about to be, but you got to get the dude white bidet. I'm going to wait till you get your own code. Yeah. I'm going to wait. Yeah. I'm going to wait till you get your code so I can go to, you know, JBE podcast okay. or yeah, Ernest or something it. like that. And then okay. you'll get credit for so it. So this is to Because you've already sold a bunch that fucking didn't get credit for. You know what I'm I saying? Know. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm here... I'm here, dude. It's like, you know, Jesus told a lot of people about Christianity that didn't yeah. want to listen. Yeah, yeah, for so. sure. You're just, you're just leading us <laughs> to the baptismal water. Yeah. So, yeah. 
I'm just I'm just a guy in flip flops trying to tell five thousand people. Yeah. you're gonna want. Today. <laughs> hey, there's a storm coming. Yeah, well, and listen, and you're gonna want to build a boat. I just realized the fan <laughs> is pointed right to you. It's not even on. Oh no, it's on. Is it really? Yeah, for sure. Just slowly making your life more comfortable. Turn it on. <laughs> you. I can't feel it. No, it's okay. I'm, I've committed to. I'm not hot in here. I am. It's last night's sin still washing out of me. <laughs> it's it's like gonna take years. <laughs> Uh, we good? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we actually did two again. Yeah. I think we did two again. We did two hours again. <laughs> Just being earnest. Just being earnest. Just being earnest. Just being earnest.